Ba ba da ba ma ma ma. Why am why is there we go. <gasps> Do you count for the MTX based on watch time? What? Do you count for the MTX? Do you mean the drops? Yeah, it's watch time. It's watch time it is. Oh boy. Uh, it's for one hour and 30 minutes, yeah. It's activated, it is, yeah. It is enabled. I'll put that in the title. No, you don't need to type claim or anything. There is nothing like that. What classes did they showcase last time? I don't recall. Yo, close the table. Thanks, 28. Oh, I gotta eat now before it starts. Dender, Dender is banned. Dender is banned. DK, DK TV. Uh, thanks for the 10, dude. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Hope they make a good ass cinematic. I'm sure they will. Wait, it says Dander is a mod in my chat, even though he's not. So now if I click to mod him, it says to unmod him. Hey, you. <clears throat> Ronnie shits takes three hey, years. You. Thank you. I'm only here for the incredibly oversized, huge, ugly hands. <laughs> it's the Sasuke wings, man. It's great. I, I have some MTX in this game. I have the gore MTX, which is a really cool idea. And the blood one. Hey, you. I can't see Dander in chat anymore. <clears throat> Blood the Raven, thanks 21. Zafar, thanks 62. What was that? Um... Wait, is this a song? Is your favorite MTX in the game? Okay. Let me see what this is. 
Atlas core. Very spacey. Not really my type of thing. I like the more brutal stuff, you know, but it's cool though. Whoever makes it gets banned ender. That's the that that, that that that's the rule. Uh what's up, Blowfish? Germa teacher noise deep sea dub. What? What? I don't know what's happening, man. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. This is your favorite MTX? I... Whatever, man. That looks good. I like that. I like that. Let's go make sure I miss anything, chat. Hold. Okay. Yeah, we're good. This is the best MTX. 16 years ago. Sixteen. Uh, you might need to re-sync your account, hey, you. Sovereign, if you don't have it. Some people have to do that in chat. Was that the actual first DLC? Oh uh, yeah, it might not be live yet because it hasn't officially started, so yeah. Yeah, Steam, you need to connect uh, your Path of Exile account. Yeah, not DLC, like MTX, yeah. And then you can get the Sasuke hands. 30 seconds, all right. Let's see how hard they go on this one. Will PoE 2 launch? It has an early access release date, but I don't know when it's fully launched though. All right, here we go. I'm pause my alerts a bit. Thank you, Lizzie, for the one-year blood rain for the 21. Sir, just what are we facing here? A relic of the old world. Ready your men, Captain. We will only get one chance. And remember, when you hear the whispers, call for help. Do not attack. When you hear the whispers, what do you think he was on about? 
It's Dorman, right? Uh, yeah. Then Dorman. Shut your damn mouth. Ugh, why do I always get stuck with these rookies? <laughs> hey, the kid's got a mean cleave. Give him a chance. Quiet. Hmm? Leave. Ice crash. A mean cleave, eh, Captain? <laughs> Rookie can't even lift his own sword. Captain Oren? Captain? It's here. Rain! Send the signal! What the fuck? Rain! <laughs> the curse in this? On my back will be laid off! Come on, come on! I'm ready! I'm ready! It's a man. No, it's not. Run. Yo. Feet, lad. <laughs> Sir, the, the captain, I. You'll be fine. Here. <laughs> what is this? no longer control this world we cannot destroy your body it's true but you will watch as we destroy everything you have built bind him feed grow my child I'll make sure you can eat your fill Someone said they were hoping for a kick-ass cinematic. That was it. That was very good, yeah. Hi, I'm Jonathan Rogers, game director on Path of Exile 2. Now, Path of Exile 2 is going into early access in around two weeks on December the 6th. But even though it's early access, this isn't just some small taste. The game is huge. In this live stream, we're going to be introducing everything you can expect. So without further ado, let's roll the gameplay trailer. Existence is a thing of beauty.
precious, but impermanent. Life and death are mortal enemies, and yet bound to one another. Oh. The continuation of life must be protected at all costs. Damn! So I've said, my methods are brutal. To this, I say, there can be no salvation without sacrifice. Wall of fire. It right, looks a lot more satisfying now. Faced with the end, and I will do what I must. What is this? Is that the Yeah, is it the Atlas or maps, I guess? who obsess with death. Let them soon be acquainted with it. Now, as you just saw, even in early access, Path of Exile 2 is a big game. It's actually been five years since we announced PoE 2, and over that time we've revealed a lot, but it's been in bits and pieces. It's pretty hard to keep track of it all, so today we're going to do a full rundown of all the content that will be available at the start of Early Access. Classes, character progression systems, and for the first time, a full overview of the end game. This is going to be a big one, so get comfortable. For 20 years, Rayclast has been free from any sources of corruption, but the Count of Ogham, tempted by promises of power, intends to harness it once more. Was it five the years ago? Are rising. Monsters are mutating, and madness is spreading. Under the dark influence of corruption, the Count doles out sentences of death to any who would question him. Yeah, this is definitely the character collection selection screen there. It's gotta be, yeah. And this is where you find yourself at the start of PoE 2. Explore the dark forests of Ogham. Traverse the barren plains of the Vest- Stop! Desert, okay, it's Twitch and doing delve it. into the jungle ruins of Utsal, an ancient Val city. It's not Swedish internet, there it's happening on Twitch. It's on Twitch. I have a thousand up and a thousand down, alright? ...monsters, hidden runes, lost camps and treasures, roaming merchants, and of course, unique bosses. No two areas are the same. It falls to you to track down the seed of corruption, the source of all this devastation. On the way, you'll face fearsome monsters. But first, you'll need to pick a class. Stop, Twitch! Now, early access will initially have six classes available. Let's have a look at them. F, the F, monk F, is lag, a fast lag, and lag. melee fighter. He dashes in and out of combat, and his mechanics involve but I building see up the and keeping momentum. Like all classes in PoE 2, you'll want to use a wide variety of skills to mix and match different combos. Yes. Stream just went like down. To get new skills, you will first need to find skill gems. Using a skill I don't gem will open I know the if they have a YouTube menu, stream, which I'm not sure. all the active skills available in PoE 2. You can choose an existing Oh wait, technical difficulties, okay. Yeah.
Holy shit. This is like ninja, dude. Wait, can I knock and drop in? Don't smash it! <laughs> Caffeine, thanks to the 28. Hey, Hentai Reader, 11. Bukriza, 22. Hey, Tyus, thanks to the 4. Karen, 4. Nine Dog, thanks to 50. Lizzie, 1 year. Blood Raven, thanks to 21. Hey, you. Hey, you. I did play PoE 1. I got to, like, low tier maps. <laughs> Hey, I never did any super bosses or anything, no. Hey, you. I basically got through the tutorial, yeah. Hey, you. Have they mentioned anything if this game will be slower or easily or more easily approachable in P1? No. I'm looking at what they just showed in the trailer. At least they were prepared for when Twitch shut the bed rather than just having a video app play Kiki. Yeah. Uh, it will be slower. Hey, you. They said, well, gameplay slower, yeah, maybe, but uh, more like making builds and stuff. I mean, it's still going to be a huge skill tree and everything. Sir, just what are we facing here? I'm gonna F5. Intends to harness. There are 21. Oh. Okay, here we go. For quarter staves. So this just scratches the surface of the options that you have. By end game, you'll be dashing from pack to pack, spewing where you find yourself at the start of POE2. Okay, they reset the video. <laughs> Explore the dark forests of Ogham. Traverse the barren plains of the Vasteri Desert. And delve into the jungle ruins of Utsal, an ancient Val city. Hey, you. There are challenging monsters, hidden runes, lost camps and treasures, roaming merchants, and of course, unique bosses. No two areas are the same. It falls to you to track down the seed of corruption, the source of all this devastation. Ooh. On the way, you'll face fearsome monsters, meet strange characters, forge unlikely bonds, and uncover lost civilizations. All right, here but we go. First, you'll need to pick a class. Now, early access will initially have six classes available. Let's have a look at them. All of the them? The Monk is a fast and furious yeah. melee fighter. He dashes in and out of combat, and his mechanics involve building up... The combat looks like so much nicer than the first game, I think. So much more impact. a wide variety of skills to mix and match different combos. To get new skills, you will first need to find skill gems. Using a skill gem will open the gem cutting menu, which shows all the active skills available in PoE 2. You can choose an existing skill to level up, or choose to engrave a new one. Since this is a level 7 skill gem, even if you pick a new skill, it will immediately be level 7. Okay. So there's no harm in trying out something new. The monk primarily uses the quarterstaff. There are three schools of martial arts. Lightning, Ice, and Wind. But don't think you have to stick to just one. The best combos are going to involve mixing elements of all three. Let's try Killing Palm. Like many monk skills, this See can be used to quickly take advantage of a specific situation. If there's an enemy on low life, you can use Killing Palm to dash to them and kill them instantly. This will provide a power charge. Oh, okay. Then we can use a different skill to consume that power charge like for execute. a much more devastating attack. The monk also has powerful combo skills. Tempest Bell, for example, is a skill that places a giant resonating bell. Hitting the bell causes it to ring, dealing damage to all enemies around it. Oh, okay. You can also do things like freeze or shock the bell, which will add elemental damage to the strikes. The monk also has a variety of abilities to empower his staff. If an enemy is close to being stunned, you can use Staggering Palm to punch them down. After that, any attack you do will shoot out wind projectiles. There are 21 active skills for quarter staves, so this just scratches the surface of the options that you have. By end game, you'll be dashing from pack to pack, spewing projectiles and obliterating screens of enemies with huge combo attacks. Now, if you like a style of melee that's a little slower, but it's right, much go. harder, it's more like me. For you. He pounds the ground with big, chunky attacks and can shrug off the hits of small enemies with large amounts of armor. 
Even though the mace slams are slow, yeah, it looks never heavy and impactful, man. Longer attacks can be retargeted as you go. And if you find yourself committed to a long attack, you can dodge roll out of it at any time. Oh, animation cancels. Okay, this Among one looks the skill sick. option for maces, you will find a variety of slams, fire attacks, war cries, and shield skills. Here, I'm going to slam the ground, rending it apart with lines of fire. Any slam skill will then cause these fissures to erupt with lava. I can even run through them with a skill like Stampede to do huge amounts of damage. Okay. The warrior can also use war cries, which can empower your next skill. Seismic Cry, for example, will double any slams from the next attack. The Stampede counts as a slam, so I can double that for even more craziness. If you want to go a little faster and be a little more defensive, equip a shield. In Peewee 2, you can raise your shield at any time to block all damage from the front, even spells. While holding up your shield, your stun meter will build as you take damage, so be careful. If it reaches 100%, your stance will break and you will be vulnerable. Okay, this Some class enemies is sick. also have unblockable attacks, which are better than Monk for me. Red flash. If you see one of these coming, make sure to dodge out of the way. Using a shield also gives you access to shield skills like Shield Charge, which allows you to charge towards enemies and stun them. While charging, you're also blocking the whole time, so you have full damage immunity from the front. The warrior okay. also has access to totems. Some totems have built-in abilities, like Shockwave Totem, which can be placed to stun nearby enemies and trigger aftershocks like those from the Earthquake. But you can also get Ancestral Warrior Totems, which allow you to use any slam skill in your repertoire. This is a meta skill, which means that it's a skill you can put other skills in no! into. I can yes. take a slam like Sunder and socket it into my Ancestral Warrior Totem. Now when I summon him, he'll sit there and slam the monsters from a distance. Okay. There are 20 active skills for maces, so there's a lot more to try out. But by end game, you're going to be dropping hammers from the sky, leaping fearlessly into combat, and separating the very earth you stand on. The combat looks so Time much better than attacks. the first one, man. The ranger is primarily it really does. Above, but we wanted to make sure that she feels agile as well. Okay, in ranger. Kiwi 2, you can shoot while moving. Combined with all the skills the ranger has that allow you to jump around, you'll have a lot of mobility in combat. Bow skills have a variety of lightning, poison, ice, and physical attacks. Lightning attacks bounce on the ground, which explode when hit by the bouncers, or electrocute enemies to take them out of combat. Ice attacks allow you to slow and freeze enemies to keep them away from you. Using poison, not only can you slowly damage your enemies from afar, but also grow some interesting plants. Huh. With 21 bow skills and all the mobility and combo tools the ranger has, you can take advantage of every situation. By end game, you'll be creating hundreds of arrows, be they falling from the sky, bouncing around between enemies, or spraying out of tornadoes. You might have noticed in the bottom left of the screen that the flask slots look a little different. In Peewee 2, you have one dedicated life flask yeah, slot I'm not an archer and one player. mana flask no. slot. Flasks gain ranger. charges as you kill enemies, and typically allow you to heal six or seven times if they're full. Uh -huh. But that's not the only thing you can use charges for. Charms are a new item type that will automatically defend you from various debuffs or damage types. Having trouble with getting frozen? Equip a thawing charm. When it's fully charged, it will make you immune to freeze for three seconds if you get frozen. Okay. To recharge it's automatic. Them, just kill more monsters. Okay. You can gain more slots for charms by upgrading your belt. The mercenary wields a crossbow that can be loaded with different ammo types, offering versatility, power, and mobility. All classes in Path of Exile 2 can be controlled with WASD, which makes That's this sick. class play exactly like a shooter. Yeah, that with is the crossbow, awesome. You will find skills that work like shotguns, sniper rifles, I'm not a huge fan of click rifles, and move, and even grenade Not launchers. anymore. But not only that, there are a wide variety of more interesting elemental ammos too. It's very fast to switch between ammo types, as long as you already have them loaded, which makes the mercenary able to combo abilities together for devastating effect. Use Glacial Bolt to create walls of ice to separate enemies, then switch to Fragmentation Rounds to explode the ice, dealing massive AoE damage. If I come across an armored enemy, I could use Armor Piercing Rounds to break their armor, and then High Velocity Rounds to take them down. Uh, the audio sounds fine for me, that's the difference. Poison enemies ...before detonating the cloud with an explosive shot for massive damage. If you want to call in some suppressing fire, you can summon Artillery Ballistas. These have a minimum range, so you'll want to prepare your position carefully before moving in. 
There are 22 active skills for crossbows. By okay, I like this one a lot more than a ranger. Sky, Looks satisfying. Look at the battlefield with grenades and pepper your enemies with your automatic shotgun. If you're looking to take a back seat and let your minions do the work, then the witch should be your choice. She can call forth hordes of undead okay, monsters wish to fight for her, cool too. while casting powerful chaos spells that debilitate her enemies. Occult okay. skills are some of the most varied in the game, with skeletons, noxious Frames. spells, specialty minions, curses, and sacrificial magic. Before we talk about minions, we'll have to talk about a new resource in Path of Exile 2 called Spirit. This is a spirit gem, which allows you to pick from a range of persistent skills. All classes have a variety of these skills which can add some very interesting effects, like Arctic Armor which does cold damage to enemies that hit you, or Raging Spirits which summon fiery skulls each time you cast a fire spell. Hmm. For the Witch though, we'll want to be using our spirit to create permanent minions. These minions will be revived automatically when they die, so you don't have to worry about oh. summoning them all the time. Here, I'm using the skill screen to allocate which minions I would like in my horde. You can see the spirit oh, cost okay, of each one. Sick. Skeletal warriors are cheap, no. but weak. Useful for tanking damage and <laughs> distracting enemies. But I want more heavy hitters in my army, so I'm going to unsummon some warriors and instead add skeletal arsonists. Permanent minions come with special active abilities called command skills. Yeah, that's a lot of quality you of life You can order yeah. these guys to detonate your own minions for even more damage and air of effect. If you want a bigger army, you'll need a scepter. This new weapon type is imbued with even more spirit, allowing you to summon even more friends. And if you want an even bigger army than that, you can take advantage of corpses to summon true hordes of minions. But what can a witch do while her army is at work? Well, she has a range of chaos spells to spread disease amongst your enemies, or bone skills to impale them. Or, you know, you could curse them to make them weaker so your horde can take them down. There are 25 active occult skills. By the end game, you will be the leader of a fearsome army of the dead, consuming everything in its path. The sorceress bends the elements to her will, using okay, them to unleash here we devastation. Go. I was thinking the witch might be like sorcerer, this but now it's Maker Master. weaves a flurry of elemental magic from afar. The elemental skills have everything you might expect and more. Fireballs, icy explosions, lightning storms, you get the idea. Each spell is unique and has many different ways to build and combo with others, even between different elements. For example, Flame Wall conjures a burning line that not only damages enemies, but also empowers all projectiles oh, that pass through it. Fire lightning? If you place a wall and fire lightning sparks through it, they'll gain extra fire damage. It's a good idea to take advantage of the ability to automatically swap weapons when you use certain skills. Having a special staff with bonuses to fire skills and another with bonuses to lightning skills can really power up a combo like this. The Sorceress can also take advantage of powerful trigger gems. For example, you could grab the Cast and Ignite gem and use it with Firestorm. As you ignite enemies, a counter will go up in the top left corner. When it's full, a Firestorm will automatically be cast at the enemy that was ignited. Ah, oh, dude, these systems there are, are 25 sick. 25 active elemental skills. By end game, you'll be firing off projectiles left and right. Our Sorcerer down looks incredible. Storms on your foes. Now, Sorcerer those are the warrior. characters that will be available at the start of early access. But we will be adding six more character classes with just as many skills and options as these. There's a lot more to come. There's one more important thing to mention about skills. Even though we talk about them as belong to each class, in reality, there are no restrictions. You can use all these skills on any class so long as you have the attributes. For example, a poison ranger might want to try out using occult curses to increase her poison damage. Or a monk might want to trigger elemental ice walls to use with his glacial cascade combo. The possibilities for cross-class combos are practically unlimited. Holy We're shit. looking forward to what kind of things you guys might find. Now, Path of Exile is a game known for build customization, and we haven't even scratched the surface of what is possible yet. So let's talk about support gems. Oh god. Path of Exile 2 has a system of support gems that can be combined with your active skills to dramatically change the way they work. If you find a support gem, then right-clicking it will open up this screen. Here you will find a variety of recommended support gems for each of your skills that you can pick. Oh, between. they're recommended? Okay. For example, this is a multiple projectiles support gem and can be used to add multiple projectiles to any skill. Normally, when you fire a grenade, it'll look like this. But if we add multiple projectiles, then you get three of them. <laughs> Once you have the gem, you can also freely move it between any of the skills in your character. If you want to have a multi-shot sniper rifle instead, then simply move the gem over to your high velocity round skill. Generally speaking, if it sounds like a support gem should work with a skill, then it will work. So it's a good idea to experiment. 
Note that you can only have one of each support gem on your character, so you'll want to think carefully about which supports can be used best with each skill for maximum damage. Now, if you want to stick to the recommendations, you should have a perfectly good time. But if you want to experiment a bit more, then uncheck that recommended button and you can see the full list of supports that will work with your skill. There are hundreds of support gems to choose from, and even we don't know the results of all the possible ways these can interact. <laughs> Each skill can have up to like five supports honesty. socketed into it. And if you're clever, you can come up with some pretty interesting ideas. Now, all of this is just scratching the surface. You can make frost vortexes, break people's armor, make minions explode, make skills repeat, make enemies set each other on fire, cull enemies, or pin them to the ground. Supports let you drastically change the behavior of your skills and create your own unique build, or at least follow someone's OP build guide. Yeah. So, speaking of builds, <laughs> yeah. let's talk about one of the most iconic Path of Exile uh, systems. Shit, here we go. The passive skill tree. Yes, it's huge. <laughs> there are over 1,500 nodes on there. Now, a lot of people open the tree and can get a little intimidated at first, but try not to be scared. There are lots of options, but at its core, it's pretty simple. Okay. Each sure. level, you get one point to put into the tree. Each class starts at a different location, but they all share the same tree. Around your section of the tree, you'll find relevant bonuses for your character. You should be safe in the knowledge that there aren't many wrong choices here. Okay. Almost all the starting nodes will be useful for your character in some way. But if you do happen to make a choice you regret, you'll be able to respec any nodes you've taken by spending a little bit of gold. Nice. That's good. Now, the tree is generally divided up into clusters which have similar themes. In each cluster, you will find small nodes that give simple bonuses like increased damage, but the real power comes from notables. Notables normally have much more interesting bonuses, and they tend to care a lot more about how your build works and what skills you're using. For example, in the mercenary area of the tree, this one gives a 25% chance for crossbow skills to not consume a bolt. And here's one that gives grenades a chance to blow up a second time. This one gives a chance for projectiles to rebound off terrain, as well as giving you some pierce chance to make that more likely. Note that even though this is in the mercenary section, this would work with projectiles from all classes, so there are often reasons to go to different areas of the tree. In order to get between these clusters, you will generally have to allocate nodes in the attribute highways. Attribute nodes allow you to pick which attribute you would like to use, so it's very easy to get points for any attribute that your gear might need. You can change oh. which attribute these nodes give you for half price at okay. the respec Okay. Huge. In addition to notables, you will also find even larger passives called keystones. Keystones have both an upside and a downside, and often require changing your entire build to design around them. A great example is Giant's Blood, which allows you to wield two hand weapons in a single hand, but oh, doubles the attribute requirements Let's go! You can use a two hand mace with a shield, or even dual wield them. Holy shit, alright. I know what I'm well, playing. How about Mind Over Matter, which makes all damage go to your mana pool first before your life pool, but you lose 50% of your mana regen. Skills like these can be tough to build around, but if you're up for the challenge, they can be very rewarding. As we showed you earlier on the Sorceress, you can swap between weapon sets on the fly as you use certain skills. One of the new features in Path of Exile 2's passive tree is that you can choose to have your passive tree change as you switch between weapon sets to take advantage oh. of specific bonuses on the tree. For the Sorceress, you might want to change between fire and lightning specialization. We saw this a bit before. Or you could switch between one hand and a two hand setup in order to be able to block boss yeah. attacks while following up with heavy hits from your bigger mace. Or perhaps you could have a full curse setup on your witch to debuff enemies before switching to a chaos degen build for maximum yeah. damage. Chaos degen. If you want to stick with just one weapon set, you can just use these specialization points as bonus points to invest however you like. But creative players will find plenty of opportunities with this system. You can get weapon specialization points throughout the campaign from optional bosses and quests. For example, if I manage to defeat the Crowbell, I'll get a weapon specialization book. There are lots of other permanent boosts available from the campaign too. On the map, you can see icons that indicate the many optional encounters you can find. Okay. Some of them have permanent character boosts, and others have powerful items. If you're having trouble getting past a boss, it might be a good idea to explore and see what you can find. For example, if you defeat Blackjaw the Remnant, you'll gain a permanent increase to fire resistance. One of the most important finds are spirit bonuses. You can find the first one here in the canopy in Act 1. 
Defeat the boss in this area to acquire a permanent addition of Spirit. The permanent buffs you gain from Spirit are very powerful, and every class will find a use for them, so make sure you hunt down these upgrades. There's one in each act. Now we haven't even talked about the most important element of character progression, items. That's why we're all here, right? Items in Path of Exile can be broken down into four rarity groups. Normal, Magic, Rare and Unique. One of the things you're going to want to do as you play through the campaign is upgrade the items you find. And you can do that with currency items. An Orb of Transmutation will allow you to upgrade a normal item to a magic item with one mod. You can then apply an Orb of Augmentation to add a second mod, then use a Regal Orb to add a third mod and upgrade it to a rare. Finally, you can use some Exalted Orbs to add more mods to your rare to a total of six mods. <laughs> One of the things we think is really important is to make these options available to use as you play. All the items that add mods are much more common than they were in Path of Exile 1. Okay. So that you can nice. use them throughout your campaign playthrough. I always just save we them for the sequel. We want you to find things on the ground that can be crafted into upgrades much more frequently. As well as making the drop rates on these items much more common, you can also get them by disenchanting unwanted gear at the magic item vendor. If you disenchant magic items, you can build up to an Orb of Transmutation. And by disenchanting rares, you can build up to Regal Orbs. Another important area of crafting items in PoE2 is sockets. Some items you find will have sockets that can have Ezemite runes placed in them that add more mods to the item. If I insert this Glacial rune into my helmet, it will give extra cold resistance. This is a great way to solve problems that you have with your build, like resistances or damage. If you find socketed items that you don't have a use for, you can take them to the salvage bench in town to work towards an artificer's orb. This will allow you to add sockets to your existing items. Body armors and two-hand weapons can have up to two sockets, while the rest of your armor and one-hand weapons can only have one socket. You can also salvage items with quality to create items like armor scraps or whetstones. These will allow you to increase the quality of your items for an up to 20% boost. If you don't want to disenchant or salvage your items, you can always sell them for gold. Gold can be used to buy items from vendors, and we've tried to do a lot to make sure that the items they have for sale are actually useful. Every time you level up, they get more stock, so make sure to check back often. Actually Other useful, Other vendors right. offer a gamble. Pay a flat amount of gold, and you'll get a random item of a specific type. This could be a great way to improve your gear, if you're lucky. Gold is also used to respec your passive skills. Take advantage of the system to experiment with your tree and rework it as required. The other thing you might want to use gold for is the currency exchange. This allows you to exchange currency items with other players on an open market, in exchange oh. for a small gold fee. Now, all items in Path of Exile are freely tradable. We never bind anything to your character, except gold. Now, most gear in Path of Exile 2 is randomly generated, but there's another type that isn't. Uniques. Ooh, yeah. They are especially rare, each with a handcrafted set of unusual mods which can dramatically Gamble change a character's sprints. build. They're not just better rare items, they can do much stranger <laughs> things that can fundamentally change your character. Corpse Wade will make any corpses you run through explode into clouds of poison. The Sands of Silk is a body armor that changes your dodge roll into a blink, morphing oh, you into sand as you teleport sick. past your foes. And of course, some uniques are just pure hits of dopamine, like Quill Rain, which <laughs> just turns your bow attacks into full auto by doubling your attack speed. Each unique is something that you can build your character around. We try to make sure that most unique items have a potential use at endgame, even if you find them early on. Holy and as you can see, every single unique item comes with custom art to match. It looks incredible. The last character like progression oh. system that you can do during the campaign is Ascension. Starting in Act 2, you will come across Ascension Trials, tests that you must complete to unlock your Ascension class. We'll explain these trials soon, but first let's take a look at what Ascending can do for your character. Each class has access to three Ascendancy classes, but at the start of Early Access, only two per class will be available. Okay. Ascendancy classes are unique to each character class, so choose wisely. They can drastically affect how you build your character. As a Sorceress, you could become a Storm Weaver, a Master of the Elements. Tempest Caller causes elemental storms to be summoned each time you do a critical hit with a spell. With Strike Twice, you can stack two copies of Shock for more damage. And going deeper into the tree, you can make all your damage types apply Shock. Make a Shock build from any skill. Alternatively, you could become a Chronomancer and command time itself. 
She literally has the ability to stop time with Time Freeze. Not only that, but she has many other time manipulation abilities. Using Temporal Rift, she can teleport back to a previous location, resetting her life and mana back to what it was. With Time Snap, she can reset all her cooldowns and cast all her spells again. On the Warrior, you can choose between oh. the Warbringer or the Titan. Okay. Titan. The Warbringer channels the might of his ancestors to gain tremendous power. Using Answered Call, you can summon ancestral spirits linked to each of your totems. With Jade Heritage, you can encase your body in a protective layer that absorbs all damage until it breaks. Okay. Warcaller's Bellow allows you to explode the corpses of your enemies. And with Great Wolf's Howl, you can ignore the cooldowns of your war cries. Let all that anger out. <laughs> the Titan class is all about hitting big. Yeah. With Earthbreaker, every slam is a chance to create an aftershock. With crushing impacts, every hit becomes a crushing blow, which will allow you to stun your enemies with ease. With surprising strength, you can take advantage of stunned enemies to deal 40% more damage. There's so much impact behind the As hits a ranger, on that. You might choose to be a dead eye, an expert markswoman who can take down foes with style. With endless munitions, every attack gains an extra projectile. With gathering winds, she gains a small increase to movement speed with every attack. But be careful, she loses them when getting hit. With eagle eyes, she will never miss, allowing you to stop wasting all those passive points on accuracy. Alternatively, you could become a Pathfinder, the master of flasks and poison. She can choose from one of several throwable concoctions, allowing her to spend her flask charges to throw explosive bottles that deal various types of damage. A bleeding concoction will make your enemies bleed, while a fulminating one can shock your enemies, allowing you to do extra damage. Potion Contagious thrower. Contamination allows her to spread poisons between her foes, while overwhelming toxicity doubles the number of stacks they can be infected by. Running Assault allows her to move much more quickly while firing, while Relentless Pursuit makes her totally immune to being slowed by enemies. The Witch can ascend into the Infernalist or the Blood Mage. As an Infernalist, she can summon a loyal Hellhound companion. The Hellhound sets enemies on fire, as well as taking a percentage of the damage if the Infernalist gets hit. With Pyromantic Pact, you can turn your mana into Infernal flame. infernal flame. As you cast more spells, the flame builds up, and if it overflows, you'll take damage. What? Okay. Using Bringer of Flame, you'll want to make sure you keep the flames topped up. While your Infernal Flame is above 30%, all damage from you and your minions will ignite enemies. She can also transform into a literal demon. While in demon form, she takes an increasing amount of damage, but her cast speed and damage increase rapidly as well. So if you're planning on transforming into a demon, make sure you stack a lot of life recovery. She can also become a blood mage, a master of life and energy. All blood mages must pay the price of making skills cost life as well as mana, but in exchange, every monster they kill will drop life remnants, which allow them to quickly gain back that life. With Crimson Power, she can gain large amounts of extra life, and with Vitality Siphon, she can use her spells to leech life back as well. Once you've got a significant amount of life, you can use Gore Spike to make your critical hits deal incredible Gore amounts spike. of damage. A monk who is in tune with the elements might become an Invoker. With Elemental Expression, the Invoker will create waves of elemental power each time he does a critical strike. With Faith as a choice, you gain the ability to meditate, allowing you to double your energy shield. Choose between I am the blizzard or I am the thunder to specialize in cold or lightning. And I shall rage will allow you to turn into an unbound avatar. Each time you apply a status ailment to an enemy, you gain unbound fury. When you have enough, transform into an avatar to deal way more damage and inflict even more elemental ailments. Some monks choose to reach into the darkness instead. Ooh. The acolyte of Chayula can exchange their mastery of spirit for darkness a resource that can be Edgy. utilized to both absorb and deal damage. The Shroud of Darkness will protect you from all damage incoming, but if you take Grasp of the Void, you will deal extra chaos damage from all the darkness you have. Their Dark Pact offers greatly increased resistances to chaos damage and can allow their mana leech to not only happen instantly, but apply to their energy shield as well. Another node you can take is Waking Dream, which allows you to see into the domain of the Breach Demons. There you will see the flames of Chiyula that can be taken to gain life, mana, and damage. The mercenary has a job to do, but which job suits you? This is early you access. You to become a witch hunter. 
Obsessive rituals will give you a sorcery ward, I'm allowing you to defend yourself against elemental hits in exchange for less defense against attacks. With Zealous Inquisition, your enemies have a 10% chance to explode on death. The chance is doubled against demons and undead. With Judge, Jury, and Executioner, your initial hit against enemies can deal up to 30% of their life and damage, if you're lucky. This is great for hunting powerful bosses. And with Witchbane, you can break your enemy's concentration, preventing them from casting spells as often as they would usually do. You could also choose to become a Gemling Legionnaire, enhancing your abilities by embedding gems directly in your flesh. Integrated Efficiency will give you extra skill slots. Thermatological Infusion gives you extra maximum resistances as you sock up more and more support gems. Adaptive Capability allows you to use any color of gem without worrying about attributes, while Crystalline Potential adds extra quality bonuses to every gem socketed into your character. So those are the Ascendancy classes for the start of Early Access. But one thing we haven't talked about yet is how you ascend in the first place. Labyrinth? Ascension in Path of Exile 2 requires completion of one of the Great Trials, which you'll find as you progress through the campaign. Holy Each one shit. is associated with one of the major cultures of Rayclast. Located in the Vasteri Plains are the Maraketh, a culture of rich tales and brutal traditions, who must do whatever it takes to survive in the desert. The highest position in Maraketh culture is a Sekima, and it is not a title given freely. All aspirants must complete the Trial of the Sekimas, a grueling gauntlet that will test their strength, will, cunning, and patience. To enter, a warrior of the Maraketh must prove their worth by trapping the soul of a djinn in a coin, and you are no different. Once you have earned your coin, it may be placed in the relic altar to begin the trial. In the trial of the Sekimas, each room has its own challenges to overcome. In this room, each rare monster you kill will send its blood to the chalice in the center of the room. Once the chalice is filled, you will be able to proceed. While fighting monsters in the trial, you will need to be very careful. Each hit will not only hurt you, but will damage your honor. The monsters are well telegraphed so that you can avoid their attacks, but if you run out of honor, you will fail the trial and need to find another coin in order to try again. It is a good idea to make sure that you are well prepared before challenging the trial of the Sekimus. Seems more pit-like. After each room, you will be rewarded. In this case, you have been given a key that can be used to unlock chests later in the trial. Once you have claimed your reward, you will be shown a map of the rest of the floor and may choose how you wish to proceed. Which challenges would you like to face, and which rewards do you want to claim? Some rooms are more dangerous, afflicting you with debuffs that will persist for the entire trial. For example, entering this room will afflict you with spiked shell that will cause all monsters in the rest of the trial to have 50% increased life. You will want to take care if you choose such a path. There are many different challenges really and rewards in as you shambles. journey through the trial. Deadly traps, waves of monsters, and strange artifacts will test your honor. As you progress, you'll be able to gain boons from the djinn, which will help you on your journey. For example, the Sekima's cloak will revive you once if you die, giving you a second shot at a run. One of the rewards you may find is sacred water, an extremely valuable and treasured resource to the djinn and the Maraketh. Trading it with the djinn will allow you to receive many benefits. You can recover honor, gain additional boons, or remove afflictions. At the end of the floor, you'll find a powerful boss which will truly test your limitations. In order to ascend, you will need to defeat him. I don't really know the Sanctum one. Having I'm unaware. The boss, you've earned the right to ascend, but first, the loot. The keys you have found may be used to open the Good various treasures in the vault at the end of the floor. We only have a single bronze key, so we'll just have to open one of these small chests. If you want to open the better ones, you'll need silver or gold oh. keys. Let's use the Altar of Ascendancy. Your first ascension will allow you to pick your class and grant you two points to use in the tree. Now there are more floors and many more rewards that can be found within the Trial of the Sekimus, but we'll save that for the section on the end game. For now, let's that talk about the second though. Ascendancy Trial. The Trial of Chaos. In Path of Exile 2, you can choose whichever trial you like to earn your ascension. Each culture on Rayclast had their own methods to ascend. If the Trial of the Sekimas is not your kind of playstyle, or you're finding it too difficult, you could try another. 
You can gain all your ascension points from just one or mix and match them. It's up to you. For early access, we will have two trials as options, with a third trial coming later for the full release. While exploring the Val jungle, you'll discover the Temple of Chaos. Before the Val embraced the science of corruption, their civilization worshipped chaos. This ancient trial was once used by the Val to test their high priests. A high priest of the Val must show willingness to risk everything to gain power. Entry to the trial requires a token from a strange entity known only as the Trial Master. For those in which he sees potential, he shall inscribe an ultimatum. Many have attempted these trials in search of greatness. Most have perished. Will you be able to defy the odds? Before you begin each chamber, the Trial Master will offer you a reward and a choice. Choose one of three tribulations to affect you through the rest of the trial. These modifiers might beef up the monsters, curse the player, or add environmental hazards like turrets or trap runes. In this case, we will be picking shocking turrets. As you enter the room, the Trial Master will fill it with hazards to test your commitment. In this case, you must destroy all the monsters that fill the room while dealing with the lightning projectiles from the shocking turrets. Rip Melly again. <laughs> Nah, melee is going to flourish. After each room, you will need to make a choice. Take the rewards you have earned so far, or go double or nothing. Increase your rewards, but take on more risk. Each tribulation you add is minor on its own, but they quickly stack on top of each other and can become overwhelming. There are many types of chambers in the trial. Each will test your resolve in different ways. This one simply requires you survive for a certain amount of time. Huh. Another requires you to escort the stone idol through the level as elevators full of monsters descend to attack you. Should you be able to get through the first three chambers, you will face your first boss. The order of the bosses is random, and combined with the tribulations you have selected, the fight will never feel the same. After defeating the boss, you may claim your rewards. Of course there are the items, but you also gain the right to ascend. If you already did the Trial of the Sekimers, then you can claim two more points to add to your Ascendancy class. Now, it's possible to go much deeper. There are more bosses, rewards, and risks to take, but we'll talk more about that when we get to Endgame. So how about we talk about that now? All right. So far, we've only been showing you footage from the Ooh, campaign. they have cooked. Some people would argue that the Endgame is really. where the game truly begins. Something that happens almost every time a new action RPG launches is people saying, there isn't enough Endgame huh. content. Oh, well, nice we point. want to make sure that in PoE 2, people don't feel that way. All right. And we actually only changed our development priority for this recently. The first three acts of PoE 2 already take around 25 hours to complete if you're a new player. This is already a pretty significant campaign. On the other hand, people spend hundreds of hours in Endgame each league. We realized that finishing the rest of the campaign for Early Access was actually a bad idea. Instead of having Acts 4 to 6 in Early Access, we could concentrate on Endgame and make that great. Okay. For new players, a 25-hour campaign is already a huge game with lots of content. But for existing action RPG players, what you mostly care about is all the in-game challenges to overcome. So several months ago, we switched the entire development team's focus over to making in-game content. At the start of Early Access, there will be 50 bosses and around 400 monster types. But the great thing is that the rest of the game is like 80% there. Okay. We'll be adding content to roughly double the size of the game during Early Access and into release. Now, in order to make the end game happen at the same character level as what it would be after we added the rest of the acts, we've added a second difficulty level called Cruel, where you repeat the campaign with all the monsters and bosses leveled up. And of course, new rewards. You can kind of think of it as like a new game plus. It's also a lot faster to get through the content the second time as your clear speed increases. That will take you to around level 65, where the end game begins. Once we add the remaining three acts, we'll be removing Cruel difficulty, so you'll progress straight from the end of Act 6 to end game. Okay, all right. But what is the end game? Oh. To explain that, I'll hand over to Mark. He can tell you all about it. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile 2. Well, one thing that Path of Exile is known for is having a lot of distinct end game content to choose between. Each end game mechanic needs to have its own progression system, areas, he looks bosses, a bit like Bilbo. rewards, 
and player power that can only be gained from that content. We are going to be adding a lot more over time, but for Path of Exile 2, we decided to start with seven distinct Would systems you, you can progress through. This is the Atlas, and it serves as the core of the endgame for Path of Exile 2. It's infinite and expands in all directions. Now, we are not going to spoil the plot too much here, but corruption from the beast has blighted the land, and your objective is to help fight it. In the center of the Atlas, you will find the Ziggurat, a temple in which the Val research the fundamentals of space and time. Here, we can open portals to nearby locations and begin cleansing corruption and finding resources. It's so sick that you see it in like this. In order to power the portal device, we will need waystones. Yeah, the game never Each stops, Each waystone no. has a tear, which will determine the level of the monsters that you will face. To go to an area, simply click one that is adjacent to an area that you have already completed. Insert the waystone and click traverse. Portals will open, allowing you and your party to travel to the area you have selected. All the areas in the end game feel distinct from the locations in the campaign, Holy and we have dialed shit. the randomization up to 11. The monster packs you will face in each map are totally random, and the combination of them can lead to some very interesting combat situations. There are over 400 monster types in early access, and they have a lot of varied and interesting abilities. Depending on which combinations you face, you might find some serious challenges. In Dude, order to cleanse yeah. the corruption from the area, I'm you will so need to defeat the all warrior. the powerful rare and unique enemies in it. Once you have done that, the area will be marked as completed and you will be able to travel past it to progress deeper into the world. If you die, then the map can no longer be run and you will have to find another way around to get to the areas oh, behind it. Oh, what? There are also all kinds of other random encounters you might run into as you play maps. One such encounter are precursor artifacts. These are ancient, corrupting monuments that irradiate the monsters around them. The monsters that feed off the corruption are drawn to their power. If you defeat the monsters and cleanse the artifact, you will get a powerful temporary buff. Some of the buffs make you faster, others rain lightning or fire around you, and some even give you increased experience or help you find better items. You can also find strong boxes. These enigmatic chests guard piles of treasure, but are always a trap. Monsters lie in wait to attack you the moment you open it, and the boxes often have mechanisms to unleash powerful spells or dangerous debuffs. There are different types of strong boxes containing different items, and you can even use your currency items to craft them on the fly, so you can optimize the contents. But be careful of opening one you can't handle. Sometimes you'll discover monsters frozen in essences, solidified crystalline corruption. These dangerous monsters can be broken free. If you defeat them, the essence they drop can be used to upgrade normal items to magic items with a guaranteed mod from a category. For example, we could use this one on some boats to ensure a movement speed mod. Oh, that's nice. No gambling. Clearly, oh, posture, essences yeah. will also drop that allow you to upgrade magics to rares, adding the guaranteed mod. This is incredibly powerful since it allows you to get a second deterministic mod in your crafting projects. Combining these with the currencies that are commonly found at Rayclast for modifying items, and we can get a very nice pair of boots indeed. Waystones, like all items, can also be crafted using your currency items. Adding prefix mods will improve the rewards, while suffix mods increase danger. The more dangerous a map is, the more waystones will drop. Adding mods to your waystones is key to progressing to higher tiers and sustaining them, but it will require you to take on larger challenges. There are a variety of factors you have to consider when crafting your waystones. Some maps will have higher density, some lower, some have more magic and rare chests, or monsters, some are more linear, and others more open. Make sure you explore and think about what makes sense. You'll never remember all of this, you, you won't to need to remember it. Just take it As one you step cleanse at corruption a time. from higher and higher tiers of the Atlas, you will gain points that you can spend in the Atlas tree. This tree allows you to juice the danger and rewards of all areas in the endgame. You could increase the number of monsters, the number of rares, the number of precursor artifacts or strong boxes, even the quantity of item drops. As you explore the endgame world map, you'll notice various different biomes from snow-capped mountains to dense jungle valleys. Most maps are restricted to certain biomes. 
As you continue to explore deeper into the Atlas, there are all sorts of things to discover. These cities are constructed by different peoples of Rayclast and have specific items that can be found there. These strange structures marked on the map don't appear to do anything for now. Perhaps you'll work out how to use them later. You might find unique maps like Untainted Paradise, an undisturbed island mm. full of beasts that give an extreme amount of experience. You may even find a lonely man just enjoying his retirement who will give you a unique item for free. In addition, you can find special areas that would make a good spot to set up camp. Clear these areas of their hostile inhabitants and you'll be able to claim them as your own hideout. You can decorate your hideout as you see fit and invite various NPCs to join you there All right, to create nice. your own personal base Hideouts of operations. Were always chosy, man. A great tool for exploration are towers. These mysterious precursor constructs are dotted around <laughs> the Atlas. Completing the tower will reveal a large area around it, allowing you to scout out your next challenge. There are lots of things to find, so keep looking. Some sections of your Atlas are influenced by corruption. This adds extra modifiers to the maps in the region, increasing difficulty and rewards. Here, slaying monsters in close proximity to each other will cause the vestiges of corruption within them to merge together, forming powerful and grotesque abominations. You may have noticed while looking at the atlas that some of the areas have these icons above them. The icon indicates that the area contains some kind of special encounter. This icon indicates that the area has a powerful boss. Because only one in four maps contain a map boss, we are able to make them very powerful and very rewarding. These bosses come from the campaign, but have had their difficulty increased with changes to AI and some of their abilities. It's worth noting that because you can see where the bosses are, you can choose to take them on or avoid them. If you do choose to hunt bosses though, then you will be rewarded with special points for the boss hunting section of the Atlas skill tree. The points here will allow you to specialize in boss killing, giving you much greater rewards for defeating them. <laughs> For each different type of content in the endgame, we are adding specialized trees in order to make it so you don't feel the need to respec your points when you change between different types of content. We will be showing you seven of these by the end of this presentation, so there is still a lot more to come. <laughs> Bosses are not the only icon you will see on the Atlas. Let's take a look at one of the endgame systems, Breach. If you played PoE 1, you might be familiar with Breach. For PoE 2, we have created sequels to several PoE 1 leagues. While the mechanic is familiar, the monsters, bosses, rewards, and progression are all new. A breach is a tear in the fabric of reality. Opening it will allow you to see the demons and otherworldly monstrosities that lie in wait on this other plane of existence. By engaging with a breach, you'll create a bridge between their world and Rayclast. In order to keep the breach open, you will need to kill the demons that pour forth. The faster you can kill the monsters, the more monsters you will fight, and the more loot you will find. You can also find clasped hands that will open and drop more items if you run over them. These can be a good boost to the rewards of the breach, so keep an eye out. One of the rewards that you may find while fighting monsters from breach are tablets. Tablets are special items that can be used with Precursor Towers to add more encounters to the Atlas. Breaches will drop Breach Tablets. Clicking on a completed tower will allow you to consume the tablet to add more breaches to areas within range of the tower. This makes all the content in the Atlas self-sustaining. Want to do more breaches? Find the tablets, add them to your towers, get more breaches, getting more tablets. Soon your Atlas will be covered in otherworldly domains. In addition, like all items in PoE, you can craft them. Use your currency to add mods to your tablets, allowing you to upgrade all the breaches in range. Tablets can have up to two mods. These mods do things like adding extra rare monsters, extra clasped hands, or even monster density of breaches, I'm allowing you to keep them open longer. Often, you will find multiple towers near to each other with overlapping areas of effect. This can allow you to rarely juice the mechanic by stacking the mods from multiple tablets. In your fight to hold the Breach Demons at bay, you may want to use the powers of their world against them. Each endgame mechanic always has player power that can only be gained from that mechanic, and Breach is no different. In I'm Breach, just gonna take it one act at a time, Items right. that can increase the quality of rings and amulets by improving specific mobs. You can also find Breach Rings, a special base type that can have its quality improved by catalysts up to 50%. In this case, you could create a ring with around 170 life, 
Breach Rings can become some of the strongest rings in the game, giving you some good motivation to face the demon hordes. In addition, each endgame mechanic needs to have a pinnacle endgame encounter. While killing Breach Monsters, you may find Breach Splinters. Collect enough of these and you'll be able to create a Breach Stone. Using a vile technology called the Realm Gate, you can use your Breach Stone to access their domain and bring the fight to them. In this twisted domain, you will find nothing but a single massive breach. Triggering it will reveal hordes of breach inhabitants. And should you be fast enough, you will be able to fight their leader, Zesht. We that are one. We that dreamed. We The wings! That's a drop you can get. The Suski wings. just one of the pinnacle encounters of POE 2. We won't be showing the rest of them, so you will have to discover them for yourself. That's good, that's but rest good. assured, this is some of the hardest content we have ever made. Okay. All of these encounters have specific uniques that can only be found from them, but that's not all. We still have the progression system. Defeating Zesht will give you points to allocate into the breach section of the Atlas Tree. Allocating these points will make breaches and the breach domain even harder, but will give you more rewards. The small nodes will increase the difficulty of the twisted domain, while the large nodes have more specific bonuses. For example, this node adds more clasped hands to your breaches, and adds a pack of magic monsters that can guard them. Get some more points and you can allocate Waking Nightmare, which will double the number of splinters you get from clasped hands, and inflict you with a mysterious debuff. In order to earn more points, you will need to defeat Zesht at a higher difficulty, and some rewards from Zesht can only be found by increasing the difficulty of the Twisted Domain above certain thresholds. Defeating Zesht at difficulty 4 will be a challenge indeed, but there are many more threats in Rayclast. Ritual altars are sacrificial sites built by the mysterious King in the Mists. If you encounter this symbol on the Atlas, then you know that the area contains ritual altars. Ritual altars demand tribute. Every monster you slaughter in the circle will feed the altar. After the sacrifice, touch it to begin the ritual. Uh, the sixth monsters of December you just killed will be resurrected by the King of the Mists' dark magic, and you must fight to survive. The tribute you have offered to the altar can be spent to buy powerful items, but they can be expensive. To gain more tribute, you will want to find more altars. Each successive ritual you do within an area will spawn the monsters revived by the previous ones, in addition to the ones you sacrifice next to it. By the end of an area, you will be fighting a truly imposing number of foes, but will have a significant amount of tribute to spend. One of the rewards you can buy with tribute are omens. These are special items that allow for metacrafting. Crafting items that affect other crafting items. Have an item with good prefixes but bad suffixes? This omen will help you to remove the mod you don't want while keeping the ones you do. There are a bunch more of these with different effects, but we will leave them for you to discover. Now don't forget that Ritual will also drop tablets, which can be used to specialize into getting more rituals. If you want to get to the pinnacle boss of Ritual, then you will probably want to use them. They can also be crafted to grant mods, making your rituals more rewarding. The pinnacle encounter of Ritual is the King in the Mists. Feared by the Asmeri people, he is said to have brought eternal darkness to the Wildwood. We won't show the encounter, but okay. just like Breach, Don't there show are a too many. of unique items you can get for defeating him. And you will gain points in the Ritual section of the Atlas Tree. Some maps have been touched by insanity. A mysterious entity has taken a special interest have in they you. Just added Step through the looking glass and you will find your <laughs> all nightmares coming from to BOE life. One? When you touch a mirror, the, same the thing. mists of Delirium will spread out across the area, infecting your mind. You must stay within the mist to maintain the nightmare, which is as profitable as it is terrifying. Everything you kill will increase the rewards that drop. However, the deeper into the mist you travel, the stronger the monsters are. Be careful not to overstay your welcome. Rare and unique enemies will become vessels for terrifying demons, who will manifest out of them to unleash powerful attacks on you. The mist also offers a strange crafting material, distilled emotions. 
By combining these emotions, you are able to instill your amulet with a notable from the passive skill tree. This is like gaining an extra passive point for free attached to your gear. They are also particularly great because you don't have to traverse the tree to get them, allowing you to get off-class bonuses that would normally be much harder to get. Distilled emotions can also be used to instill your endgame maps, applying Delirious to them and adding additional difficulty and rewards, allowing you to further juice your endgame maps. The tablets you can find from Delirium can be used to further improve it, increase pack size, make the fog dissipate slower, or improve your progress towards the pinnacle encounter of Delirium. Speaking of which, every now and then you will find Simulacrum Splinters. The mysterious entity will create strange encounters based on warped versions of your own memories. Monsters and Simulacrums come in waves that get progressively more difficult. You will receive loot at the end of each wave and you will have to make the decision to leave now or continue on, facing up against even tougher foes from the mist. The bosses you will face as you get deeper into a Simulacrum are truly terrifying. If you can complete a simulacrum, you will gain points for the delirium section of the Atlas skill tree. Next up, we have Expedition. Okay. Occasionally, this was while clearing new, corruption, wasn't it? you will encounter these Kalgurin settlers. The Kalgurins have discovered ancient burial sites with lost Verisium artifacts, and they want you to help dig them up with explosives. The Kalgurans have marked the locations where the relics can be found. Oh wait, Place no. Place explosives as best you can to dig up as many as possible. There is just one problem. Corruption has brought the corpses of their ancestors no, to No, I was thinking so of the other one. you might have to do a little cleanup before you can reclaim the artifacts. When you build a city. I was thinking of that one. You can also find remnants. The destruction Settlers, of yeah. which will further anger the restless dead. Each one you blow up will make the subsequent monsters more powerful, but also more rewarding. Danig, Rog, Tujin, and Gwenin will exchange the artifacts for useful items and runic magic. You can also find tablets to increase the number of expeditions and the rewards. This one increases the radius of explosives, while this one increases the number of remnants you will find. Oh, the expedition of these are in Eventually, settlers. Eventually, oh, you yeah. might That's discover a logbook. These are special maps full of buried treasure and relics. Essentially one giant dig site. Here you can create an extremely long chain of explosives and go through a very high number of remnants. But be careful. Many remnants have mods that can rarely break your build, so you will probably want to avoid these ones. If you add too many remnants, you could easily make the encounter harder than you can handle. There are all sorts of interesting things buried under the ground in logbooks. You might find dripping caves and hidden pirate caches. But the most powerful encounter is Ulroth, the ancient undead commander of the Knights of the Sun. Defeating him will grant you unique rewards, as well as points to spend in the expedition section of the Atlas tree. So those are the endgame systems on the Atlas, but we are not done yet. <laughs> the trials we talked about earlier have much more content when you get to endgame 2. Just like the other endgame systems, they also have progression mechanics, How is this early access? and player power that can only be gained from them. As you get higher level coins for the trial of the Sycamores, you will unlock more floors to explore. Each floor has its own challenging rooms and a floor boss that you will need to kill. There are four floors in total, leading to another pinnacle boss at the end of the last floor, which can only be accessed at endgame. The trial of the Sycamores is where you'll find jewels, which you can socket into your tree. These are like passives that you can craft with your currency items. They can be really powerful as they allow you to stack modifiers that may not be easily accessible on the tree normally. This jewel gives lightning damage and shock chance, for example. There are quite a few jewel sockets on the tree, so it's possible to gain a lot of power here. There are also other types of jewels that don't provide any bonuses themselves, but affect other passives surrounding them. This jewel increases the effect of small nodes and radius by 25%. With careful placement in the tree, you could get a significant amount of power from it. There are also unique jewels available with very interesting effects, but you will have to find those for yourself. In order to push further into the trial and uncover the secrets of the Marraketh, you will want to take advantage of its progression system, relics. Relics are items that can be placed in the relic altar as you start the trial. They give special bonuses that affect the trial, making it easier and increasing its rewards. Of course, you can craft these with your currency items, making them even stronger. 
If you can complete the entire trial overcoming all four floors, the final boss will reward you with one of many unique relics. These relics will be consumed when used on your next run, but can reward you with unique and powerful items. For example, this is the Last Flame. If you use it, you will have only one honor for the entire trial, so you will need to do a completely hitless run. Oh. Yikes. The Trial of Chaos Rip also again, extends I guess. into the endgame. As you gain inscribed ultimatums of higher and higher levels, the number of chambers that you can go through increases. In true Val style, this allows you to take even more risks for even more rewards. At endgame, you can progress through up to 10 chambers with three bosses on a single run. Stacking 10 tribulations on top of each other will make this a significant challenge, but it's worth it. The Trial Master will tempt you with items of the Val Empire, such as Val Orbs. Vile orbs are powerful crafting items that corrupt your gear with random, mysterious outcomes. Corruption prevents an item from being modified further, so it has to be the last step of your craft. But it's also the most impactful one. For example, if you use one on your body armor, it might add a new powerful enchantment, or it might re-roll up to half of its modifiers. Vile orbs also have the ability to add a socket, allowing you to bypass the normal restriction of how many sockets an item can have. A body armor could get up to three sockets this way, allowing for a significant number of mods. Vile orbs can even modify uniques. Adding enchantments or sockets to uniques can make them incredibly powerful, but there is a good chance that you will break them as well. The Trial Master will also occasionally offer you soul cores. Originally formed by Chaos, the Val sought to replicate soul cores through human sacrifice rituals and blood magic to power their civilization. Soul cores are powerful socketable items, with mods that cannot be obtained from regular runes. Like all endgame content, there is of course a pinnacle boss. The final chamber will drop keys to this mysterious door. Some say this is where the Trial Master himself resides. Perhaps you are willing to take the risk to find out. Had enough yet? Because there is still just one more thing. The most difficult content in Path of Exile 2. All right, While let's mapping, go. you might come across this fortress that has emerged from underground, surrounded by an enormous maze riddled with danger. Is the maze preventing something from getting in or something getting out? This fortress is of ancient origin and its construction has similarities to the towers and tablets that you have been using on your journey through the endgame. It is clear from the entrance that there are three keys required to enter. Local factions are vying for access to the fortress in order to seize the power they believe will be inside. Each of the faction's leaders have managed to get their hands on one of the keys, so you will need to defeat them. Each faction is led by an uber act boss. You can see one of them inhabiting the city, but in order to fight him, you will first need to defeat their two lieutenants in the adjacent zones. Be careful. If you fail against either of the lieutenants or to kill the leader, they will move on and you will need to find them again. Oh. Kill all the uber bosses and you will gain access to the fortress. We aren't going to spoil it as we can't wait to see you guys attempt it nice. for the first time. Okay, good, but is good. there a tree you get points in after killing it? Of course there is. This is Path of Exile. There is always another tree. So these are your challenges for Peewee 2. As you can see, this project is crazy huge. Way bigger than even we expected when we started out. <laughs> but how do you gain access? Well, during early access, you'll need a key to get in. To thank our existing POE supporters who have spent more than 480 US dollars, we'll be giving you guys a key for the PC version for free. Anyone else who wants one can get one by purchasing one of the new early access supporter packs that have just been released to the store. If you just want early access to POE 2, then you can get a key in the 30 US dollar early access pack. The pack also comes with $30 of points to spend in the MTX store. But we also have a variety of other supporter packs filled with exclusive microtransactions, points to spend in the store, and even physical items. The cosmetics can be used right now in POE 1 and in Path of Exile 2 when early access starts. Most of this footage has been recorded in Path of Exile 1, since that's where you can use them immediately. The Lord of Ogham supporter pack contains a cosmetic armor set befitting Ooh, of the Count of Ogham himself. There is also a matching back attachment, which has an alternate variant depicting the influence of corruption. Oh, also in this pack, you can find a portal formed of the rusted armor of the fallen soldiers in the Red Vale of Ogham, and the offspring of a vicious crowbell boss found yeah. in the hunting grounds. This one doesn't look so vicious, though. On top of that, you'll receive the Iron Count's Zweihander to apply to your one-handed or two-handed swords. 
For those who are wanting to decorate your hideouts with fond memories and tales of Path of Exile's history, you will also get a series of hideout statues. This pack contains the statue of Hillock. For Path of Exile 1's closed beta, each pack contained a true New Zealand icon, the Kiwi. Following this tradition, all packs in this series will also contain a new themed Kiwi pet. The pet will loyally follow you into battle, but run away at the first sign of trouble. <laughs> Become the ruler of the desert with the King of the Faradun supporter pack. Show your mastery of traversing the sands of the Vasteri Plains. The body armor will allow what you to glide hell? along the ground with ancient sand magic. Now each armor set comes with body armor, boots, gloves, and helmet. But the boots are covered in sand. If you'd prefer to show them off, you can turn the gliding off if you want. The accompanying back attachment equips you with two powerful pillars that can control and manipulate lightning. They will periodically release their energy in a powerful blast while in town and hover in a circle around you, arcing lightning between them, forming a barrier of energy. Replace the appearance of any bow with the Faradun's glory skin. Or replace the appearance of a spear with the Tyranny's end spear skin. This spear skin can be applied to staves and war staves in Path of Exile 1. If you want to truly show your worth as a king of the Faradun, then you definitely need your trusty, moving, entire city fortress known as the Dreadnought to travel across the Vasteri Plains. What about all in TX I bought in first PoE? Like. Feels bad I can't no use it in PoE yet. too. You can. It comes with a variety of thematic elements to use, or use decorations it from goes over. in the game. Additionally, you will get the Deshret's Blessing level up effect. The king of the Faradun Kiwi pet, and last but not least, a statue depicting the Vile Oversoul from Path of Exile 1. For those who don't know how supporter packs work, each pack comes with all of the cosmetics from the previous tier, so you'll get all the items from the Lord of Ogham supporter pack as well. The Thaumaturge of the Vile supporter pack features an armor set and back attachment themed around the Vile and their pursuit of science and progress. You can find the Soul Core weapon effect in this pack which causes thaumaturgic energy harnessed from sacrifice to spill from your weapon. This pack also contains... I don't Durrani's remember, Baba Billy. It replaces the default appearance of any foci to an ancient relic once used by Doyani. Uh. And this can be applied to shields in Path of Exile 1. That's not the only Vile weapon you'll find. It also contains the Wand of the Thaumaturge skin. And the Royal Sacrifice Dagger skin. You wouldn't think to put sacrificial gems on a Kiwi, but the Vile did. Thaumaturge of the Vile supporters will receive the Thaumaturge of the Vile Kiwi Pet and the Statue of Dominus. This is also the first pack in the series with a physical item. When purchasing this pack, you'll receive a Path of Exile 2 logo t-shirt. <laughs> but if you don't want one, you can opt out and return for additional points to spend in the store. Okay, that's nice though. Becoming a Warlord of the Karui supporter will grant you an armor set and back attachment adorned in jade carvings and iridescent feathers resembling power. Enough to even impress the ancestral gods, specifically Tukuhama, the Kadui god of war. Overkill, you say? I think the Kadui people <laughs> would disagree. Why not drop a gigantic totem on rare enemies you slay to crush them to a pulp? Replace your crafting bench in your hideout with the Ancestral Canoe Crafting Bench, where Ancestral Chief Mata will summon a giant canoe manned by Kadui warriors to aid in your crafting desires. We must all start somewhere. You'll also get a pair of weapon skins. Equip Akoya's Felling Axe skin to your one-hand or two-handed axes, or Tukuhama's Crusher to your one-handed or two-handed maces. A true Karui warlord is always accompanied by their trusty Kiwi. Equipped with armor and harnessing ancestral magic, they make the perfect sidekick. Once one of the most feared beings in Rayclast, Malachi was slain by a powerful exile. May the statue commemorate the virtue of exile's past, present, and of the future. Of course, it's not all about dressing up in game. You'll want to look good in real life too. Look at by this combat of the compared to the, to the second game. You'll also get a of Exile 2 hoodie. Our final second tier of supporter pack in so this series better. is the Liberator of Rayclast supporter pack. The Liberator of Rayclast armor set and back attachment come made with the finest materials in Rayclast and shattered glass mosaics suspended in divine power. Set up your base of operations in the Beacon of Salvation hideout. Why restrict yourself to just one island when you can liberate more? The Beacon of Salvation hideout comes equipped this, with that was the first game, yeah. They're showcasing the first game now. Personal operators of boats that you can use to row between them. 
Just walk to the piers, click a boat to enter and navigate as you choose. Decorate each island as you see fit to best represent your well-earned hideout. Everyone there's in like, your hideout can use their own boat. There's Why not much impact races? when you hit with melee there. You can see with the maze. You can it's also like, get the window to twilight. When the second effect. game is like Wah. a beautiful mosaic piece of art that shatters and reveals a gateway to your desired destination as you approach it. As you walk away, the glass magically reforms back to its original form. Rule and style with the throne of the ruler map device. Sure, this map device can create portals to in-game maps, but it also comes with a throne you can sit on to oversee your growing kingdom. Look down on the plebeians running your maps. Being the liberator, though, is not just about sitting on your throne all day. If you do decide to join the fight yourself, you can leave a high priest in charge as your second in command. <laughs> liberator of Ray class supporters will also get a set of varied weapon skins. The Light of Divinity Scepter skin. The Deliverance Crossbow skin. The Justice Flail skin. And the Redemption Shield skin. Once again, you'll have an accompanying Kiwi, and of course a statue depicting one of the most iconic events in Rayclast's history. The battle between a powerful exile and Kitava, the insatiable. With the help of two deities, Sin and Innocence, the exile was able to defeat him once and for all. This supporter pack also contains the Path of Exile 2 art book. Oh. This 215-page full-color art book includes a huge amount of amazing concept art and lore produced during the long and exciting journey of Path of Exile 2's development. And finally, Path of Exile has a tradition of letting the community participate in designing game features. For Path of Exile 2, we'll be adding the Twilight Order Foil Reliquary. By becoming a Liberator of Rayclass supporter, once Path of Exile 2 is released, you'll be able to select any unique item you have found and be able to drop it from the Reliquary. Once players have submitted their items, keys to the Reliquary will start dropping, and other players will be able to find foil versions of uniques that you have submitted, along with a message for the lucky player. The more players submit the same unique, the more chances there will be for the reliquary to drop them. So choose wisely. Now, almost all of these items are available to use in POE 1 right now. Mega there are a few exceptions where the death. item class clearly doesn't exist, such as crossbows or flails. And there are also a few microtransactions on weapon types that are unavailable in POE 2 at the start of early access. Once classes that use those weapon types are added, those microtransactions will be available to use. If you can't decide which supporter pack to choose yet, you can always start with the Early Access Supporter Pack that just includes a key and some points to spend in the store. Then you can upgrade to any of the following tiers at a later date. These supporter packs will be available for purchase throughout Early Access. We'd really like to thank you for your ongoing support. Without you guys, Path of Exile 2 could not have happened. Now, I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions. Stick around, because coming up next, we have a live Q&A with Ziggy D. Holy, oh, Ralphie, thanks for the sub. Wisher, thanks 45. Jordy, thanks 30. Uh, Liard, are you going to play Soybender or Soymaster? No, dude. The uh, the warrior in in Path of Exile 2 looked so heavy. I feel like in a lot of ARPGs, they... they To the post-show discussion and Q&A. They get the I hit really feedback. What you've it, seen there's so no far. hit feedback. It's been pretty exciting for us But in this well, one, it was. You guys have been inspired already just watching things <laughs> and you're already oh, cooking yeah. a new ascendancy class but. yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta do design whenever you can yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely i've there's been a few fun moments here already but uh i'm your host ziggy d and i'm joined by jonathan and mark to talk about everything you've seen honestly it's so much mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean we were really keen to like make sure that when we went into early access mm -hmm. that people didn't feel like it was just you know limping <laughs> limping along and kind of you know just like a minimal amount yeah. of content we really wanted to kind of blow people away so uh, hopefully people feel like yeah there is enough content um because uh yeah it was a certainly a was certainly a mission to get all that stuff in. <laughs> yeah i did come here expecting that there would be you know maybe a basic mapping placeholder mm -hmm. end game <laughs> and your three acts and mm -hmm. you know the half the classes but uh you've uh, made a decision here clearly that's got to go to the core poe player community in mind absolutely so i mean we I have, have to my glasses sure, like i mean look Path of Exile's end game is kind of known for the fact that you get to choose between different types of content and that like, you know, some people enjoy one thing, some people enjoy another. And I feel like that choice is like a huge part of what makes it good. So if we didn't have that when we entered end game, then I don't think that would be a, you know, like that wouldn't be a Path of Exile end game. Um, so that's kind of, kind, of, kind of what we have to make sure of. So um, we kind of said, okay, well, like, what is the minimum number of like different end game things you need to be able to have in order to be able to actually have a viable end game that you feel like you get different choices. And um, that's how we ended up with what we have here. I definitely feel like 
a lot of games nowadays release, you know, and their campaigns intact and real good. You get to the end game and it just falls real flat. Yeah. <laughs> and it was certainly a very important moment for us when we were like, hold yeah. on. Yeah. That's the wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. like, a lot let's of not games. make the same mistake as everyone else. Let's pivot. <laughs> and we actually did that and like it made a world of difference yeah. and made the game all of a sudden, you know, a hundred times yeah. bigger with an infinite amount more content, right? It was definitely hard though, because like, okay, the, the, like, so we're, we're, you know, we're progressing. It's like, we would have, we would have made it. We would have gotten, you know, all these acts in if we hadn't have changed direction. It's like to actually say, you know what, we're going to specifically not finish mm, this content that we'll be yeah. working on, you know, that we, that we, that we, that we, that we, we, you know, it's like pins down everyone. We're stopping work on this. We're going to move over to end games. It's actually more important. Like that was chat. certainly a hard one. That would have been some weird watch there, I imagine. <laughs> for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like suddenly the whole, you know, like environment art team, it's like, you know, they're all just like, whatever you're working on, just scrap. You don't want to scrap, but, you know, like, just stop it. <laughs> we're, we're doing something else Thank now. Thank you, Basket, so, for the 43. Yeah. Especially for a lot of the developers, because you've got to also think, like, a lot of our developers have just been working on this campaign for, what mm -hmm. is it now, six years. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, it's, I think it's even longer, actually. Yeah, it's like it's just this <laughs> epic journey, mm -hmm. whereas none of them, you know, a lot of these people haven't been working on Path of Exile Early the 6th of December. So some of us are like, you know, we're just churning out in-game with every league and doing all of that. But for a lot of these people, a lot of these developers, yeah, it was quite jarring to swap over. But everyone embraced it, you know. We talked yeah, about mm -hmm. it. Everyone was happy about it and stoked about it, and it just ended up coming out real awesome, so... I think it's landed well, and it mm -hmm. definitely kind of blew me away when you. So even before I saw anything, we were in the in the car on the drive yeah, yeah. here, and you were just info dumping <laughs> all of the end game. You're like, "Oh, we got this picture. We got I this picture." Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting dopamine just from hearing about it. I haven't even seen anything yet. <laughs> but do you guys feel like you're competing against yourselves a little bit here? Because Path of Exile's kind of set the bar. The original game has set the bar for what is available to end game in a game like mm -hmm. this, and. It makes uh, it's not acceptable really to launch with just nothing in, in terms of yeah. end game now. Absolutely, I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, like if you're not competing with yourself, then um, I don't think you're <laughs> going to make good progress, right? So right. Uh, yeah, that's what you really have to do. Yeah, but uh, cracking that out for beta, even. Yep, is, uh, absolutely. Pretty well, listen, I just, I just think it would not have landed nearly as well uh, without that. And I think um, yep. it's important that our existing Path of Exile One community feels like they're also served. Like, yeah, sure, we're doing all this stuff for new players, and that's really important, and that'll expand the audience. But you know, if if we launched and all the PoE One players are unhappy, that wouldn't yeah. be good. So uh, you know, we we have to make sure that they also feel like you know they've got a game for both them and for all the new players we hope to br yeah. um, bring to the genre. And you definitely want all those different axes as well. Like just having two, right? You you'll get a lot of a lot of content can be immediately divisive, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, yeah. that's the nature of it. That's <laughs> yeah. how it goes, right? And so you have all of these different avenues because there are different players who like different types of content. Yeah. So if you're just like, here's your one end game system, yeah. well, immediately like then there's <laughs> yeah. a portion of players who are just like, You have 59 pages of transactions, right? Martin so Peewee. all of these options Holy. is like ultra key. And that is what Path of Exile 1 has taught us. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's like, I'd say lessons learned, you know, for the genre and it is expanding in other games and stuff. But um, yeah, certainly, as you said, competing with ourselves, yes, <laughs> Peewee 1 has like, you know, 40 axes, you know, and we've got seven really good ones here um, and obviously more to come, um, but seven is a lot, mind you. Uh, <laughs> you Especially know. when it's all like, you know, like pe people have to learn a lot of things again. Mm. Uh, I, yeah. It's going to be very interesting to see how long it takes people to do the kind of difficulty for pinnacle content. Um, oh, like, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like we have, a, you know, we have to, it's, it's, it's honestly like we actually don't even really know because like you never know what people are going to find in terms of builds and so on. Mm. Like uh, I'm hoping that it'll take people a while to uh, be able to, to, be able yeah. to work it out, but uh, you know, you never no. know. Maybe, Game maybe is uh, one, six to the just, like, Oh yeah, <laughs> easy, no problem, mate. You know, <laughs> could be what it's like. We have yeah. A few people that are doing that sort of thing. I, see, I saw like a solo cell phone level 100 in 24 hours or something. Jeez, okay. <laughs> we got this is where we've got it now is it <laughs> <laughs> so uh but i imagine there'll be a little bit of a soft reset there for, yeah, for sure. a there's stuff to learn. period there's stuff know? to learn and i mean pwe 2 has changed a lot over the years so more than mm -hmm. five years of mm -hmm. development now and what was that initial pitch when pwe 2 was first put forwards like as to what it's going to be because it was right. much smaller in scope originally yeah so when we started it wasn't even a sequel it was just we're just updating the character ricks <laughs> and uh, over time, it kind of feature creeped into a in, in, into like a proper into a proper sequel. But the thing that we were saying is, whenever we were talking about it, and I guess this is the main thing, is that we're like, okay, when we make an area here, it needs to be that there's like a, a theme for it. It feels unique from everything else. We're not going to just like have recycled stuff like within the campaign that just feels like, oh, you know, we just took this area and modified it slightly. You know, each one's got to have its own stuff. It's got to have mm -hmm. monsters that were like carefully thought about that like you know fit in with the world, and it's got to have bosses that are actually like good tier quality. You know, and every area is going to have one. 
Um, and um, so those decisions <laughs> um, has kind of, have kind of been things that have meant that um, uh, like it, they really raised the quality bar to a level that took us way longer than we even really expected. Like the, th those things there, just like they, mm. it, it's, it's huge, right? Like I, honestly, I feel like we underestimated significantly what it would take to deliver well, that level of quality. I remember really early on, probably a, a battle I fought for, and I mean like way back, was like, if you think back to say Diablo 2, which obviously still holds a lot of, you know, power in terms of design motivations and philosophy mm -hmm. and stuff within the company, you get things like the super uniques and PLB1 did them and it's just like, here's a boss with one or two skills. And I remember very, very, very early on in PLB2, I'm like, I want every single boss to be memorable and a thing. I don't want a unique monster that's just like dies in two seconds and uses heavy strike and has a fancy name. <laughs> and I remember, I, I, mean, I even got some yeah, push. Poor Caleb. I, got some, I remember getting some <laughs> um, pushback at the time and thinking like, you know, I, I love the bosses, my favorite part of everything. And so I was just like, man, I really, d I don't want that. this. I, this is just terrible. And, but of course that decision, me pushing for that, me wanting that turned into this megalithic. What have you done? Now we have 50 aiming to be a hundred, honestly, probably <laughs> later, several more hundred once all the end games, everything <laughs> start to devo uh, evolve and more expansions comes out. And I'm Go like, drop. Um, nice. yep, we maybe just made, you know, a hundred times more work for ourselves, but 100% bloody worthwhile because I'd say those bosses are one of the main, you know, attraction pieces of the game. And if sure. anyone who plays they it are is just joy, like, yeah, you can tell. holy crap, those boss fights are amazing. Mm. So like, you know, obviously some are bad and some are good to different people and all that. That's how it all goes. That's part of all the fun. But um, it is true that me pushing for that thing literally created thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of work. Now, <laughs> worthwhile work, but it is again that exact thing of like, this, the scope was kind of small on numerous axes and as we just raised and raised the quality bar to what we thought was good, um, it certainly went from, you know, uh, what was it initially? Just reskinning some character classes and new I rigs think or so, whatever. Pardon, so yeah. like yes. mega scale and title Should be. campaign. Yeah, yeah everything. <laughs> but full standalone separate game. Yeah. Fun, fun other anecdote since we went out of that territory. It was originally codenamed Project Chimera. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I, that was... <laughs> it was this pipe I've dream. Never, I've never been a fan it was of Rob's, being codenamed yeah. by <laughs> things it like was this, It was this, like, there, there were times, way back in uh, the original office, there was all this, like, sometimes there'll be a feature you can't really do in POE 1, and it was always like, ah, we'll do it in Project Chimera. That was, like, <laughs> amongst the developers, and people were like, what the heck is that? <laughs> now, ironically, um, there is a boss uh, in Act 3 called... Well, it's got a different name, but it's called the Chimera internally. It is a Chimera. It's a multi-headed beast. And you've seen it in a few of the um, marketing, you know, things here and here, different trailers, little snippets of it. Um, and I think it's just ironic that that, that was actually the first boss asset made mm. before everything, the first monster, because back in when we used to just make random monsters and we'll find out mm -hmm. how to use them. And that was made for that game. It was used in the original POE2 trailer, Right. It is the only incomplete, technically, but only from a balance <laughs> or it was the last boss to finish in the entire Path of Exile. <laughs> 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 it sounds like there was like some sort of emotional demon that you had to battle there. Yeah, you get like the, the wings from the, the original first super boss they showed. You had to we, finish it. we had a, a moment with the uh, monster game designers where we're like, oh my god, it's happening. The Chimera <laughs> is finally being finished. Holy no! Yeah, this is like, yeah, we were effectively like, we need to celebrate this boss finally being done. It was like at the origin, and now it's at this, you know, point where we're about to deploy early access. You know, not to say the end, because there is the end is forever away. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, it's still the beginning of a journey in many ways. Huh? Yep. But uh, on that note of celebrating, like, how do you guys feel having now kind of, for the first time, I feel really like laid bare, kind of everything you have, you're putting it out there and. Uh, only being two weeks away from no, there's always a balance um, well it's money. always scary always. Um, you know coming into a release and I think especially for you know there's like um, a bunch of people on the POE2 team who have you know who are like they, they have this is their first game that they're going to be releasing mm -hmm. and that experience is something that um, you know like uh, yeah like it, it, it's tough and honestly I think that um, even we were feeling a little bit cocky actually about the fact <laughs> because you know we, we release uh, you know you know content for POE1 all the time and I feel like we kind of felt like we knew uh, what it took to get a game released, but honestly, like Pee Wee Two was just a whole entirely different demon yep. uh, as far as getting things out. Right, like it's just way more difficult. Like when you actually have to make everything, like the whole freaking thing, right, right from the ground up again. It's like wow, there's there's way more stuff there, and like there's even things like like the passive tree where it's like 
I feel like we underestimated what it would take to get something like that to an actual releasable state. Like it, 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 that was a huge amount of work, just like absolutely colossal to get it to, um, to you know, to get that kind of stuff in shape. Like it, it was, it's just been crazy. Um, so uh, yeah, like uh, it, it, obviously it's nerve wracking, you know, coming up to <laughs> coming, coming up to a, a, a release day. But oh, um, yeah, I, I think we do have something that players are going to really enjoy, and you know, like it's always comforting when you know. I mean, we had a live event in um, LA recently. You know, people, um, you know, we got to the time limit, and everyone's like, "Oh man, we don't want to stop." You know, so like I'm, I'm really, I, I think people are going to really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's been a whole different experience for me here playing this time around as well, whereas before I was playing a very buggy kind <laughs> of internal version of the game that was very experimental, now playing a, you know, almost what I'm going to be playing. In well, I heard weeks, you so. still managed to blow the count up the elevator with uh, some kind of knockback. <laughs> I was so, going to mention that. Yeah, we have to, so we have to just go with that one. <laughs> I, did, I did send the Act 1 boss up an elevator yeah. with knockback. It was, uh, it was good. Intended, intended mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. Yep. He, was, he was in his like big wolf form and kind of trapped yeah. in there, so just barking at me through the, through the wood. <laughs> it's good. So a few, a few little, I'm sure there's a few yeah, things course, to work out over this next two weeks. I hope the team can have a little bit of a rest for a day before they get back into it. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's been. Uh, it's been. It's been a lot. Um, so you've done that pivot to the end game focus and mm -hmm. got so much for us now to play around with mm -hmm. in the beta. And um, it seems like originally I was thinking, you know, we might be playing for a few weeks here mm -hmm. and then. Uh, you know, maybe going back over to some Path of Exile 1 stuff, mm -hmm. but it seems like you guys want us playing through Christmas. That would certainly be good. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm, look, there's enough stuff there. I think it will take people a long time to get through. Yep. And I mean, obviously, it's also going to be LF, wasn't a brain risk? I am campaign. not a well, brain risk. It will take people a fair amount of time. Um, it's just so something yeah, Chad has uh, made up. And then, of course, the end game as well to explore. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it should be pretty significant. Mm. Um, I mean, we've always wanted it to be that uh, Path of Exile 2 leagues, you know, are going to be, you know, a, a like how PV1 leagues are, where you, like, you play them and you play them for like you know a reasonable amount of time, yeah. uh, and then you know sure you get done with them eventually, and then you've got the next content that comes out. So um, yeah, in order to be able to realize that, you have to have enough of a base to uh, make that happen. Yeah, people are cool. definitely wondering like how invested they can get in the beta. So I definitely want to ask a few questions kind sure. of around that idea. Um, so is, is firstly, is there going to be wipes and resets, and will there be something before launch as well? So we are going to be having new like leagues effectively um, throughout the beta whenever we launch something significant, um, to, because you know we want to make sure that all of the you know effectively that people are able to um, play through. But mm. that stuff will be merged into an early access uh, league. The game is free to play on release. Into full release. I don't know when it's full release around. now. Now, I can't promise that everything about your character will function exactly <laughs> like how not. it did uh, in that thing. I, I imagine it would um, be a glorious kind of snapshot of all of the... Here's yeah, all the broken, yeah, all stuff, the broken stuff, stuff. But effectively, we can contain all that stuff in the sort of early access league. And then if you still want to play those characters, you know, like, uh, then, then you can go right ahead and do that. But, um, mm -hmm. you know, the action is always going to be in uh, whatever the most recent league is. And then, of course, after that point, there'll be a standard that everything goes into, which, uh, you know, all, all our economics... Or in two weeks is early access. It's not free to the, play, uh, then. It's 30 bucks <laughs> to get access to the early so, access. Uh, yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, you know, no doubt what will happen. Well, it's nice that it's a not going to be affecting what will be the standard league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, that's, that's that the idea. people will be able to kind of get invested in their characters. Are you using absolutely? I mean, there's Herman even Miller Aaron really cool chair, the by the way, making something that will be like that little historical piece. Yeah, absolutely, a little collectible. Absolutely, well, and I'm sure there'll be cool some handful of legacy things that only exist <laughs> in early access leagues. So uh, you know, I guess we'll have to see what comes with the unique balance. You talked about like the um, you know playing for a week or how long are we expecting? Yeah. Well. We also got to remember, and a lot of the you know a lot of the POE one players will be thinking very differently to people who are obviously going to experience this as a new game. But it is a new game, yeah. right? You don't have all these predefined, hyper refined builds to play to immediately mm -hmm. you know go through things. You don't have people coming in with like fully detailed seven million <laughs> line but with build guides of exactly what to do with what <laughs> items. The discovery is going to be there. The discovery takes time, and the discovery is like honestly ultra fun for me. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, now those things will emerge after time. Of course yeah. they do. Completely fine. But you should remember, I played like, there's Enki's a lot of Arc game Witch. to play here to discover. To that was learn, my first ever character. The, world, the new narratives, the new world building, the new unique items, the ascendancy classes, the massive passive tree, which is bigger than POE ones. Um, the like you know end game systems, the bosses. That like it's it's not going to be this like you know even you know I, personally when a POE one league comes out, for example, I play for like a month. Um, sometimes a bit longer, sometimes a bit less. It ultimately also depends largely what's going on here and how much I need to invest here. So, you know, and there are other people who play for more like three and whatnot, but there's certainly going to be a much longer time period you can play this for while still discovering new stuff and not feel like you're finished, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, now, of course, you see that's subjective. 
everyone can pick their own point when they finish. But if you want to see everything and do everything, you're going to be investing a lot more time, especially this first time round. And then obviously with every league, there's more to discover, but you get faster at doing all these parts over and over and over again. You'll get more efficient over time. That's how the game works. So, yeah, I'd expect a lot of time to be sunk into this to fully explore it to start with, like a lot, you know. Um, not a week, not two weeks. <laughs> you're you're going to be going far, far longer than that if you want to see everything. But, you know, it's it's up to you. Play at your own pace. See how you want to go. Learn at your own pace. That's the that's the beauty of a new game as well, which you, we, we haven't been able to experience with Path of Exile 1 you know, or, or other games and for so long is actually discovering the entire world. And, yeah, there's some familiar mechanics at the end game and stuff like that, which is awesome for people. But, um, yeah, I, I certainly want to really... I'm very excited to see people discovering the new yeah. things and getting so excited about it. I can tell you're amped for watching people go through that discovery process. I'm maybe oh, even like diving into yourself 100 a bit. <laughs> I uh, I mean I love sitting there in Path of Building as many as <laughs> as many of us do, but uh, I am very excited for that. Oh well, yeah, disco- that we're new discovery that, process yeah. for a while. I think you were saying I'm how mapped. much you were you were part spreadsheet. I think I'm like I think I was saying I'm like maybe sixty percent spreadsheet, forty percent discovery, and, and there's my play <laughs> archetype. Yeah. You know, so coming up with our player profiles, yeah. so. <laughs> Timmy Spikes. And oh yeah, Maluni. <laughs> it's comfy sitting characters. like that. Yeah. Oh. The discovery part of me is ultra excited, and yeah. I, and I'll oh, mind you. That's coming from someone who kind of knows all the content. Mm. I'm still, because there's something different about making it versus actually playing it live with the players, seeing them discover it, Unique's being linked in chat and on Reddit and yeah. all of that is just so, so, so cool. So gonna, we're going to get a massive dose of that, and it is, like, genuinely exciting to just see how people are going to think, you know, what's worth one chaos or what's worth ten chaos, what's worth a hundred... If chaos is, is chaos even, even the metric, the, yes, is chaos even the currency that people I, settle already? We were arguing yeah, about yeah, this yeah. earlier. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that one C spam and chat might turn into one E because, yeah. like, you know, one exalt. Given that exalt is I now, think, yeah. I think it'll be chaos. People so probably the people, people, will still be. People don't appreciate, by the way. Like, so when we say we've increased, you're going to be getting multiple <laughs> exalts this will next play one. This. In, uh, in PoE mm. 2. Like, it, we actually have increased that a lot. It yep. isn't just like an idle, you know, like. I can see exalts becoming the new kind of like chaos. And yeah, then, I think and actually that chaos will being be, the new yeah. device. I actually agree. We co opt a little bit on um, Path of Exile yeah, 1. Yeah, we'll see. But, so like, that's my point. Yeah. But it's a new economy, right? Who like, knows? who even yeah. knows? Yeah. Uh, the market will have to. <laughs> but I like they were yeah. already arguing about yeah, this. It's good fun. Um, so, uh, do you have some kind of like beta release roadmap for updates and things like that for people to look forward to with that? I mean, well? we certainly did have one six months ago when we were, <laughs> <laughs> but uh-huh. now that we're, but now that, that we're, uh, you know, now that we're sort of getting to, to release, it's like, oh my God, like, you know, we have to look at it. So, I mean, look, I, I, I don't think it'll be any less than six months and, um, I think it could, it could easily end up being more. Um, I certainly don't want to, I mean, look, 2025, I think really want to uh to st- to be you know to full release in 2025 i i don't yeah. really want to be spending more than a year um that would be um that would be pretty crazy but i mean honestly like we have to get all the content finished um and all that sort of stuff um you know we always feel like we underestimate these things mm-hmm. uh, and of course we have to um learn what we need to learn Prizes we are to regional to the point when it is uh really fun 50 bucks um, for you, you know, for early access to, oh um, 15 make sure that, 15, like all of the things like you know we've got the difficulty right for all the players we've got the economy right like all the stuff i mean there's a lot of things that we're going to you know we're gonna have to sort out so i kind of have a feeling that the first few weeks at least are going to just be a scramble of like you know um oh crap someone like we this crazy thing out and we found this thing and like you know the the that, that's always scary um you know because it's just uh mm-hmm. when we add content to poe one it's like at least the kind of base of stuff that we have is kind of you know well tested and people know kind of what's going on with it but uh, here it's like just complete new world and we're the kind of game that has a lot of ability for players to do stuff that we wouldn't anticipate um, you know, we have yeah. um, the the you know, just the way support gyms work and everything like that. So I just we, there's certainly a lot of worry that like there's just going to be builds that are like completely ridiculous that we just never anticipated <laughs> combining certain things in different ways. We don't that's expect, the best you know, part. Though. Hundreds of support gyms that can be like that. So uh, you know that's going to be an interesting and one. It will happen. Yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. It, it is will. inevitable, right? Oh, yeah. Like there's nothing we can even do about it because mm-hmm. you 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 need hundreds and thousands of hours of testing to be able to do that with what can only be done with hundreds of thousands of players mm-hmm. um and but that's also the magic of it all yeah, which is awesome exactly that's i love I this these guys are just gamers making a really game they love man classes and 36 sentences like actually yeah that's, 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 that's absolutely we have a lot. <laughs> we have we have we know what we want to do with it's a bit all that unhinged, stuff. Uh, it is a bit um <laughs> but uh you know uh we we like a challenge 
I mean, you know, the, 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 a studio that produces a passive skill tree like we do uh, clearly uh, has a bit of a glutton for punishment uh, with regard to just, like, mixing it. You totally could have done six and then, like, I don't know, added more later in an expansion or something. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe we could have. I mean, look, that, this, is the, this is the plan. This is the plan, um, you know. I mean, like, as you go through, as people go through early access, it's going to feel like there's just expansion content coming up pretty frequently um, just because, you know, we have all the stuff that yeah. we kind of, you know, Exciting. got mm -hmm. some of the way, a lot of the way through. So, yeah, yeah there's, there's stuff to come. I mean, look, I'm pretty sure, like, I really want to get the Druid out. Like, we announced it. We've talked about it. Um, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, I'm keen to get that out there as soon as we can. Um, you know, the Huntress, we've talked a bunch about as well. There's, like, with that, those kinds of things I think will be, will, you know, we'll be able to move uh, towards those pretty quick. Um, but, uh, you know, there's, yeah, obviously more to do. The other thing you mentioned, talking roadmap-like things, is yeah. um, we've always been... You know, it's hard to predict because a lot There's of no what will Garfield. happen is, and what we leave space for is reacting to what the players want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if you plan everything for so long, yeah. you're going to have very, very, very slow reaction times to fixing, mm. you know, or adding certain content where there may, you know, maybe the issue is like, ah, oh, the campaign needs more of this or this mm -hmm. class needs more of this or something. So if you're, you're planning, then you're going to be delivering on what they want solved like a year down the line or even longer right, yeah. and where we like to remain very very dynamic and like you know you want to be able to fix that stuff like oh well this is the main problem like sure obviously you need more than a week sometimes <laughs> most of the time <laughs> oh but that's sick I we want it generally to be that I didn't the know next that. It releases expansions updates whatever can alleviate as many of those problems as possible mm. so yeah the you try not to get too strict with the planning has generally been our philosophy because mm. especially when it comes to actually having the life <coughs> service product out um, because that is very very important otherwise you're you're never going to seem like you're doing what people want and what are you doing if not that so, you know? so that actually is a good point like <coughs> i was going to ask what do you folks what does the team want out of the beta because obviously it's like a good way to market the game but it's also a, you know, key to shaping the game in the future, like so, an actual beta. It's not just early access. I think one of the most important things, I think it's going to be really good for the development team to get back into a live mm -hmm. mindset and like get it back into the idea of like okay, everything we make is shipping. It was exploring shipping. the game with ice so, mines. So, like get it back <laughs> into, you know, people are seeing, you know, like actually getting back in that and like, yeah, like, and like being able to sort of see directly, like, okay, we make something that goes in the game, people like it, don't like it, like that kind of stuff. Like, and that, that really, like, that has been our studio for like most of its lifetime. Obviously, we, yeah. you know, before we released Pier One, it wasn't. But after that point, I mean, we are a company, like we are a company that likes to think that we can do live service better than anyone else. Like that is our goal. Um, and so, like getting back into that again, you know, for the entire for everyone in the studio, so that everyone's working on things that are going to be releasing within, you know, certainly in less time than uh, you know than three months away. Um, is, 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 is I think be really, really good for us again. Mm -hmm. um, I, I look forward to just maybe being able I will, to do maybe I these, these long term, like game really still looks absolutely sick. Like that span over years, mm. it's like you go so long without proper feedback. Like stuff kind of gets made, and then like yeah, you know, you, it's not really in a real game, and so it doesn't you get probably lose properly. perspective, and, and you absolutely lose perspective yeah. on the stuff. So I think that um, that's just going to be a really great to get back to that again. Yeah, I, I honestly, as you said, it is early access. It is a beta period, and I'd say you know personally speaking the thing that and we we mentioned it briefly about the character balance and the builds that are broken and all that that's obviously pretty useful to me right yeah plus we have other systems in there like <clears throat> you know the checkpointing system right you have to kill the boss in one life you know the, these are things we haven't mass tested and obviously other games have and they work and that's awesome um there are other things like you know the end game system is a little bit less forgiving and that if you die you fail the map right hmm. these things are things that we obviously need to test and iterate on in the future by adjusting the difficulty and stuff like that. And you, especially as you get towards this point of, um, <clears throat> you know, the end game, like, okay, act one has been tested like crazy. Yep. Right. And you get less and less testing as it goes on because you get less um, people, you know, they've just been around for less time. And so, yeah, it's going to be a, a huge amount of iteration and feedback and from the players and us just, you know, reevaluating all the stuff. And the thing is, we're always dynamic about that stuff. Like, we'll just change things if it's wrong. We'll redesign it. We'll come up with a new way. Um, Jonathan's a firm believer of if A doesn't work and B doesn't work, then we'll find C, we'll find option C, we'll find option D, and we'll <laughs> keep changing things, and we'll make it work. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of that iteration on our design decisions, how forgiving, because, like, the game is pretty hard. You know, it can be pretty hard. And so when you're on that fine line of, like, you know, things are difficult, um, you know, it's, it's not too easy to know if you've tilted one way or the other. So 
you know, finding what everyone agrees should be the common corrected difficulty is something that I will obviously yeah. be paying very, incredible, very, very close attention to. It's a pretty hard thing to The Warriors down the is the definitely the, <laughs> the one I'm um, mostly hyped about. And so you've, we've seen that a lot where you folks have been pretty willing to change and then rechange and rechange again. Mm -hmm. Some of the core features like flasks and mm -hmm. the waypointing system and mm -hmm. portals. And you're keeping that kind of mindset nice going to greater them. Of course. I mean, look, we're always willing to change stuff. Like that mm -hmm. flask thing, like the most recent change to that was like ultra recent. Um, yeah. Like uh, I don't, have we even had like a, a, a closed beta of that yet? Was that, no, no. I, think it, I think we haven't, yeah. I think but I mean, I think it's way better no. than it was. Like it's, uh, the things, things have improved a lot. And honestly, like that's one of those things we've been wanting to do something to sort out flasks for ages. Yep. And it really came about because um, when, when actually looking at what new players were having trouble with uh, when they were playing, Flask piano was actually like even from the very <laughs> beginning of the game piano. actually ended up being one of those things that like people just had probable just mm -hmm. like just the manual dexterity required to like hit all your different flask keys and then uh, like no like oh you have to know when one of your flasks has run out so you can move to the next one and like various things like that like all that stuff actually was like just a weirdly a large amount of mechanical complexity right from the very beginning yeah. um, and then even at end game I don't think it was really that satisfying either because you ended up no. with like you know just like having to press all these buttons all the time and obviously it's all utility flasks that people are using at end game um, and then we kind of tried to band aid this in POE one with the um, you know some of the flask automation stuff that was added there but there was still this idea that um, uh, that you're still you more powerful two, if you uh, don't automate. So therefore, you know, like it's it, like you know, it's like there's, there's that trade-off there. Oh wait, so you'd be so, no, 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 um, in one. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get you. Really? Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Sure, sure. And then it's all automated, yeah. and you're very powerful. Yeah, sure, all right. <laughs> but um, you know, so the point is effectively that the charm I stuff guess that you we're can doing effectively too. means that you no longer the game is making that decision of like you know the, that that stuff will be automated. You no longer have to do that like crazy flask piano to get the best um, you know the best out of your character. And I think that is definitely a step in the right direction. Mm. Um, and uh, the other thing as well is it actually makes the the, the crafting. Uh, more meaningful, I think, on the flasks because when you've got like uh, five slots, then um, like the individual mods and the individual stuff like seems to tend to not matter as much. I mean, obviously, you know, people want instant recovery and things like that, but yeah. you know, like the uh, oh the, hell the, yeah, the, Joy, like now I'm like glad you actual, like it. It's much more meaningful, like on your life flask, the choice between do I want instant or do I want way more uh, like li life, like that kind of stuff actually can be a lot more meaningful once you've only got one. Um, so yeah, I think I think it is a lot better personally. You have, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll jump ahead to Floss since mm -hmm. we're on the topic. You have um, uh, locked in effectively the fact that there's a mount of Floss yep. there now. So there, there's always <laughs> going to be a mount of Floss. Mm -hmm. And how does that how does that tie into Bavarian your Esponius. design for mana? And are we always going to be using mana flask slot, or um, if we solve another way, no, no, what you, does it do? You can absolutely solve another way, and then you'll just have a flask slot that isn't doing anything for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it kind of has to work that way because we um, really don't want. Um, yeah, because like once you sort of start getting into changing changing that around, um, uh, I feel like it's, the system sort of starts to break with regard to like you know. The, the feeling of like I know where mana is I know where my health is like that kind of stuff that being said you know we've always got uniques and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, I believe there's I already that. yeah there it, is a unique yeah, there that is a allows unique you to equip two yeah, yeah. flasks but the so, thing yeah. is then that's a oh. build choice that you're making yep. uh, so it's a little bit different um, and that's less fine. flask better um, but uh, okay, yeah, I think the, the system me. as it works now just yeah it's a lot easier so it does sound like on the mana side of things then that there are going to yeah, be like angles of solving mana, of not course, necessarily of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah, flasks. I mean, so we've got Leech, um, edition number 475, uh, how it works. <laughs> yes. uh, and uh, it, it, we've finally got it right this time. Um, so, uh, you know, um, the, the, and, and, and yeah, I think it works. And I think it's good. So mm -hmm. I think that Leech uh, <laughs> will, be more, will be more common. I'm not going to have to like crack out the Leech diagram showing yeah, the yeah. different buckets and things like that. I was that. saying, I think, I think that Leech might be... No, I think... I was, I was going to say, Leech is one of the topics in the studio that has wasted the, wasted the most designer time of anything <laughs> in, the, in the industry. Yeah. But I actually don't think it's that. I think the actual worst offender is oh. what stats should decks give you. I think that that is Ooh, like the, yeah, that close. one has wasted so there's so many arguments about that. I feel like that one's that, never come to the fore. Like we, no, know, we know about no, the no, Leech no. one, but, thing, but no one is happy about giving accuracy. But no one has a better idea than what the accuracy that it can give. Mm. And then, like everyone's going to come up with like and chat a bit. I bet they'll be like saying, "Oh, you know, it can give this or this, whatever." Um, but uh, there's like it. it, it yeah, seriously, there's been endless arguments about that topic. It's like, it's outrageous. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. You've got me thinking about it now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 speed would be good, but then it's no, probably too much. No, no, you, you, too much. Something like Dex, you just yeah, can't. Yeah, Dex no. stacking speed. Oh, we, can get, we can get all the designers yeah. down here mm. right now. Yeah, I know. We'll just have it out again. We'll just have it out again. Whole, again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The longest Q&A of all ah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already going to be that. Yeah. Sometimes and you're just like, just uh, you start the day, and you're like, all right, here are the problems we need to solve. And then you're like, what about but then oh, no, accuracy on dicks comes oh, up again. No, it's 3 p.m. and we're still discussing dexterity. Yeah, yeah. 
Yep. <laughs> so, so like, uh, yeah. right, just make it accuracy again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that is literally how it comes back to accuracy every time. <laughs> <laughs> this is our guide. Yeah. Um, rewinding a little bit, um, we, we can't forget our roots with Path of Exile 1, of course. Mm-hmm. So for the POE 1 enjoyers, uh, what's the plan for POE 1 during the course of this beta? Is there going to be leagues launching? Uh, is it on the back burner? Yeah, um, it, it, well, there absolutely will be leagues launching. Now, I can't, I don't know the exact date, but the plan is kind of late February. Yep. But, I mean, look, it's, it's, we'll see what happens. I will admit that, unfortunately, we did have to steal a few POE 1 resources just towards the end here, mm-hmm. um, which has uh, kind of a, a, a been a bit unfortunate. I really wish we didn't have to. But, uh, yeah, as I said, we kind of underestimated some of the stuff. But um, the, uh, everyone is going to be going back to POE 1 again um, for, the, uh, February, for the February League. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to make sure that we can, we can do that. Like, yeah, one of the things that um, go to was a problem for our studio when we had a long-term project and a short-term project yeah. is that... Um, you know, you've always had that thing of like, it's always, you always want to work on the short term thing. Yeah. So now that we've got two short term things uh, coming up, I actually <laughs> think it's going to be a bit easier to prioritize in some respects because, <laughs> Funnily uh, enough. you know, it's like it's all, it's, it's just like it's all that stuff is then, um, you know, is like coming up soon. So, uh, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, we, we need to get that POE1 uh, expansion out next. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, I just want to always make it clear that, you know, the reason why things can't be so planned out is, again, we're just releasing this game. Thank you, dude. Um, (laughs) Obviously, we pivoted to end game, and then that needed more resources. And Mm -hmm. then, of course, combined with the fact that, um, you know, things obviously change. There are unpredictable things in the environment we Mm -hmm. can't necessarily guarantee. And then, of course, Tomorrow at one, I think, um, of You know... Uh, Christmas coming up and all of that, right? There's so many variables to consider, mm-hmm. and but we also don't know how much time is going to be invested necessarily or need to be invested into live operations for post-release. Mm-hmm. How many problems are going to go wrong? How many builds are there? How many of the uniques are broken? How many, you know, <laughs> and where do all these resources go? There are like just millions of variables here to consider, and so like it can get very, very difficult, especially at this time. Monday, mm-hmm. But once you release, you have a, a, a bit <coughs> of a grace period, so to speak, where yeah. we're a more like a period of extreme amounts of fire, where we're putting out fires <laughs> oh, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. But <laughs> we, have a, we have a period where we're fixing everything, you get everything stable, and then we're going to be like, all right, let's recalibrate, figure everything out. That I know out, of, Piney and, Myson, and yeah. They haven't said anything else that I know of. And establish all of that, based also on the feedback we get from that, you know, period where everything's on fire. Um, not to make it sound like it's going to be bad, but that is the inevitability is that there's always well, problems. Ho- and hopefully it appears good from a player perspective, but there's always <laughs> yeah. going to be, there's always going to be like, king. oh my Thank God, you. people yeah, found have... this. And, you know, like, yeah. We don't have to see all the fires. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, <laughs> like fine. ideally, ideally the best ty- thing is when we're able to fix some kind of exploit before people even hear about it. Yeah. And when I say exploit, I'm just talking about some broken thing. Like mm. if we, like, so we, we obviously <laughs> normally have to worry about like the whole mid-league nerf concept. But it's like if you can if you can deal with something within like an hour or two of it happening, then it's like you're kind of okay because um, <laughs> you know the, the, no one had a chance to kind of like everyone everyone didn't swap their build over to it or whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we're gonna have to be really on the ball for Peewee two just because there's so many things that are new. Well, I mean, look, we have several bosses with I several can't think elevators. This. <laughs> I need to wait for them to stop. Up the elevator, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Well, that's I'll try and, what I mean. When I'll, I'll I say fire, out. I'm talking yeah. about bosses getting pushed up elevators. Like, that's yeah. not okay. Yeah, I am well, liking my okay. mercenary flashbang <laughs> knockback, is very fun. Right. Yeah, you need to look into that, by the way. The whole flashbang. <laughs> I, uh, I feel like you're going to nerf my build. Yeah, yeah. Is this one? He's Stay away finding from my fires already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, no. These are the fun things. Discovering that stuff can be very fun for the players. It's just internally, it's like, oh no, we have to, what are we doing? It can get a little bit panicky after a release, you know. And it, it, it you know, there's lots of things going on. You're like, oh, geez, what, what do I solve first? No, but, it's scheduled um, to end in like two minutes. You know, it's the same as POE one. I think we're good at it at this point. It's supposed to be two um, hours. Just some you experience. Know. Yeah. Belts. You uh, aren't going to be torturing us with like <coughs> releasing beta stuff at the same time as. Poe two league launch, Poe one league launches. Like. Yeah, the plan is to uh, keep them separated a bit <laughs> from you. each other. The microtransaction so uh, stuff, Moonquake, yeah, yeah, yeah. you carry over <laughs> that I know of. So uh, we saw a cinematic, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, to put it lightly. It was mm-hmm. pretty. That was quite epic, and mm-hmm. uh, and that has been cooking for quite some time. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was pretty exciting. But Thank we've you, also Polymore. seen just a lot of story stuff happening in a, on a much higher level. Absolutely. than previously now so yeah, stepping so up I mean, your storytelling game here a bit yeah so we're really wanting to make sure that the storytelling in poe 2 is much better than what it was in, in poe 1 um like you know there's a lot more kind of um 
How many hours guess, of content uh, will like the, the, be in like POE to early access? Stuff with the, like the introductions to like boss 500. fights and outros and things like that. Like all that stuff, we've, we've just got a lot more storytelling going in. Um, all of those, um, all of those things. Um, we do have the intro cutscene. There's also um, can kind of like light, like between the acts. There's these kind of like more kind of uh, motion graphic type uh, cutscenes, just kind of established yeah. things. And uh, there might be some more it's surprises crazy. later on in the game as well. Uh, not in early access, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, later on, that, uh, that, 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 that we can uh, that you can see as well. But ultimately, we just want to make sure that, um, like, I think a lot of people who got through the POE one story had no idea what was next happening. Next year, Arashi. Um, and so, uh, yeah. effectively, we want to make it's sure not that that's yet. not the case this time around. <laughs> that people really are able to absorb things. But Guilty. one thing I will say though is that it's ultra important to us that we don't break the feeling that, like, when you're playing a second time. That it, like that it feels like that we don't want it to feel annoying the second yeah. time. Yeah, we were talking about this this morning. About yeah, yeah. We don't take the control out of the player's exactly. hands. Exactly. So yeah, I'm I'm a personally <coughs> a, a believer of the fact that if you just change, if when you change the camera position for a cutscene, enjoy very um, immediately. It feels way more annoying. Like because there's just whole this whole thing of like like if you click on an NPC and like the camera changes position. Like sure, when you're playing through the campaign the first time, um, that kind of thing is like you know like that can be cool. But Thank um, you, then issue. the the if 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 you're um, uh, like you're playing through the you know second third fourth fifth time, you want to be able to go to the NPC and go click 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 click, click and just get past <laughs> and without it feeling like uh, you've, you've you've had to sort of worry about anything. So um, yeah, like effectively, we want to make sure that it's still um, that, that we that we still have that you know for, because ultimately you know we're a game you expect people to, people to play through many times. So ideally, we can kind of deliver both the situation where the first time you play through it, it feels like an amazing story that you're getting that you're taking seriously that you're understanding that you you know there's like all those sort of touch points and um, you know little little um, you know things just all through while also maintaining the fact that if you know what you're doing it's like you don't have to go talk to some quest giver just to get a quest like you can just go do the thing you know without having to talk to someone about it first um so uh you know that kind of stuff is really important just to make the you know the, that that stuff work well when you, when you know what you're doing yeah you said something this morning that stuck with me where you said like path of exile is a game where the player's meta knowledge is allowed and yes, encouraged absolutely absolutely so you're yeah, allowed there's, to there's, cheat there's, quests yeah, so you know what there's, there's what the character knows and there's what the player knows and in our game what the player knows <laughs> is, is needs to be sufficient as far as like being able to progress the storyline mm -hmm. if you can you're not you don't, you don't want to have it so you just talk to an npc just to find out something you already knew as a player mm. um yeah like so, if uh, you know you kill this boss you get the next year is waypoint so you just like kill it log yeah. out log in waypoint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i love doing that sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um so you explained to me the other day the um kind of the context for the beast and yes. how that leads into the cutscene in the beginning of uh poe 2 from poe 1 and that mm -hmm. i think helped put it in a lot more perspective for me and made me appreciate and understand what's going yeah, on in the yeah story so game effectively more. what you're seeing in the opening cutscene is effectively the um a, a new uh, a, a new seed of a beast um, that um, is going to be uh, is, is growing now in POE one um, you know the beast uh, uh, the beast was killed and then uh, what happened in response to that is a bunch of all of the, the gods in the world were able to um, uh, you know were able to effectively rise again uh, and you killed a bunch of them but um, there are more uh, you know in the world uh, and effectively um, you know uh, we, we, we don't want to spoil too much about the storyline yeah, overall course. but effectively obviously someone here uh, you know the count is wanting to uh, harness the power of the beast once again um, and uh, then we have, I have the, something uh, to say all right i don't want to cut saying, them you know, over uh, no cut don't do off. this this always turns out badly <laughs> uh, you there was know. a comment in chat that i loved that was like stop opening eldritch boxes yeah, exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> why do people keep doing this yeah yeah but i I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, old, if, if someone handed you a mysterious orb, wouldn't you press Ooh, the button? I mean, um, there's a puzzle box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm going to try, but <laughs> who knows how many hours it's going to take me. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> So um, we had a fun moment earlier where you were watching it and you were like, oh, we really need to, need to rename that passive because mm -hmm. he's a Karui and, and <laughs> yeah, it's it a wolf. A, uh, it's called great, a wolf. Great Wolf's Howl. The Great, great Wolf, wolf obviously being a, so he went out is, there is a might yeah. history. You started yep. telling him. I stomped out of the room. <laughs> and I yeah. was like, we need to rename that notable. He's Karui. And then I was kindly reminded that actually he was... An orphan uh, who uh, an yeah. orphan and was adopted Monster. by a Ismite and raised <laughs> and <laughs> so yes, there is a mixture of Karui and Ismite background and I was so like it works. You were oh, wrong. Fair enough. I walked <laughs> yeah, back yeah. in here all sad and yeah, yeah. whatever. My yeah, bad. Looked, yeah. It's fine. The name he is good. He looked so chastised <laughs> when he came back in. <laughs> but that just like 
<laughs> points to the fact that I feel like you're doing a lot more with the characters here. For sure. You even mentioned that ascendancy stuff is going to have an impact story-wise. Yeah, yeah. Story -wise. So, um, like with, with that's wild. We, we just think a lot about this kind 36. of stuff. So the yeah, the, the acolyte of and I always get this name wrong. The acolyte of Ch is it Chalula? Chayula. Ch Ch Chayula. I always say this wrong. <laughs> um, so uh, the acolyte of Ch Chayula, for example. Um, so that we have this sort of storyline with the origins of the monks, where there's like an order of uh, monks who uh, worship a uh, thing they call the Dreamer, and uh, the Dreamer is actually uh, uh, Chayula. So um, they, and they don't know this. So they're effectively <laughs> worshiping a breach demon. Uh -oh. So uh, the acolyte of Triola is effectively you embracing the fact that I'm worshiping a breach demon. I'm just going to go all the way. Just, and uh, you know, I'm in too deep now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're just going to we're just going to do it. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of thinking like that that goes into these things. Like you know, what is the history of these uh, people? Like you know, because I think a lot of that stuff inspires uh, interesting mechanics as well. So for example, on that one, you've got that into the breach skill, yeah. which kind of means you you know you're always mm. in a breach all the time. You can see the like you know things <laughs> going on. Like mm. that, that stuff is. I think that just there's a lot of of cool inspiration there so uh, coming up with that storyline stuff um for for that stuff just i think just yeah there's a better. couple other little little things that i think is cool as well and hopefully people will notice and pay attention to so there's one of the bosses that was shown as uh uses a lot of time or chronomancy and um mm. interestingly if you are a uh, sorceress and you ascend to chronomancer and you then go to fight that boss um if you for example try to use time freeze uh, the boss is like, yeah, they are, nah, that doesn't nah. work on me. <laughs> yeah. And there's a dialogue line. And you if you will. cast temporal chains on them, he's like, <laughs> you know, just puts it back on you. And it's yeah. like, yeah. And so there's interesting things like that. And it doesn't like change things on a grand scale, right? It doesn't make a certain class not viable or anything yeah. like that. But there's this interesting little quirks and quips everywhere. Different bosses have different intro lines depending on what class you're playing. Mm -hmm. um, they have different skill lines sometimes depending on what class you're playing. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've got different dialogue all through the campaign for different mm -hmm. classes, like the um, the sorceress um, is obviously from the Marraketh. When she goes back to the Marraketh, there's kind of a little backstory there about how she was banished originally. Um, so, you know, she needs to find a way to, you know, to be, she needs to be accepted back into their culture again. Uh, you know, like we've got things like, uh, you know, the character we talked about earlier. Um, so the warrior, you know, was an orphan. Um, you know, he... Uh, uh, he was brought up by well, I'm not saying one of the anything NPCs in Act One Town. So obviously there's a whole different dialogue there because he's effectively well, his just son, nostalgic. You know, got things like that. Um, there's there's a lot of thought that's gone into you know just trying to make it feel like all these character classes have some level of involvement with the world. You know uh, they mm -hmm. didn't just come into existence the moment that you. There's you know. um, other little things. So like more on the narrative side, you obviously we saw the world map. You have the icons that show different things that are in each act, like all the things you want to explore Such for, find idea. and yeah, awesome. Mm. But each of them also has a little bit of a kind of a little bit of text on them as well. And like, for example, the um, there's one in one of the first areas in the game that's just like a camp of Iron Count guards. And um, you know, we showed it in a trailer when the, when the Ranger class trailer we did. Um, you know, whenever it was, you saw the Ranger shoot some of the kill some of them because they were trying to like hurt a, a child. You know, and the child was just trying to get some food. And the ranger just, like, snipes them with arrows and kills them ruthlessly. And so you read this thing and you're like, you know, you, you hear whispers of an Iron Count, you know, uh, scouting party that was slain by a rogue archer or something like that. <laughs> so you get these little things where we're, like, connecting a lot of little dots. And even that, you absorb a little bit of interesting little information. Mm. Um, you've got other things, for example, when you enter an area, it, don't, it only, not only says the name at the top now, it has a yeah, little, almost a subtitle cool. text that's yeah. giving you a little bit. A little bit of history. And or, these little yeah, things, like, somehow flavor. make the world building feels so much better and when you approach certain uh, landmark rooms and you walk into them you'll get a banner at the top as well which says what it is and gives again a little bit of a thing and all these little micro uh, narrative delivery mechanisms like, it is free on release yeah no, early access is 30 bucks aware though. of what's going on and way more connected to your character way more connected to the bosses to the npcs um it, it's yeah, there's a lot we're doing now that we certainly never did before we didn't even think of before um mm. But yeah, it's it's. I, I like it's that awesome. a lot because, like, as an action RPG gamer, I don't really care too much about plot, but I do want a really cool world to be mm -hmm. blowing monsters yeah, up. Yeah, it's gonna be free to play. Like, how like, cool. want, want the baddies to be cool, and I want like the things happening around me that like in you know build out a bit of that story without me having to stop killing stuff. Yeah, 
And it sounds like there's more of that going on as well. You do get 30 bucks in MTX, yeah. The baddies being cool. I mean, that's (laughs) That's how we almost designed an ascendancy class in here just before when we were watching (laughs) the trailer earlier. Yes, so you were were saying a shadow. You came up with a shadow ascendancy. Yeah, yeah. Well, (laughs) internally we had some developers watching the trailer yesterday getting excited (laughs) about it, and then I was like, I want to play that. I want to play that character. I want to be that character. That's awesome. That, like... (laughs) kind of Val Thaumaturge mm. type character. And so, like, cool. all of a sudden it's like, we should make that a class. And then we had another guy like suggest it should be a shadow. And so now I'm like, oh, yeah, we're definitely, come on. We, ha- we have to do a Val Thaumaturge <laughs> yeah, like shadow sick. ascendancy. Like, that's going to be cool. And you can do awesome things now even. With, I, I know it's hard to see because you hide it under all the armor, but you can do things like, you know, with our character no, classes, well. just due to the upgrades and models. I am supposed to depart for DreamHack, yes. Tattoos added to them and stuff like that is completely mm. feasible in the future. And, like, I would, I want to do a lot more of that stuff. Like, for the, um, there's little things like for the uh, Warbringer, I think was the class name on the Warrior. When you take that Ancestral Totem node, all your totems now have, like, an extra blue glow to them, kind of mm. like they're enhanced by this Ancestral Magic. Oh. Um, and what we also want to do is has uh, add tattoos as well that, like, glow blue when you're using certain skills and all that. So heaps of little things that, again, connect all the culture and all that stuff together and make you feel like, you know, it's believable as opposed to, and this is a character as opposed to this is just a mechanic and, you it know. makes yeah. picking an ascendancy more epic. I know that there was a part in the trailer that was, like, not fully finished where yeah, you ascend and it doesn't really... Really do anything, but I know yeah. you want it to be like a cool moment where some power goes. Yeah, in absolutely. Yeah. We just hadn't finished the VFX yet. Um, <laughs> even the uh, another one, the Blood Mage. When you like, you know, play the Blood Mage, and now you get an additive surge on your character. Whenever you cast spells, you're getting like almost blood bending kind of vibe Sick. going on, and like drawing it from their yeah. veins and sending out yeah. a fireball. <laughs> like Scarlet. It's cool. Mortal yeah. Kombat. It's so, real cool. Yeah, you can have like the <laughs> tattoos get tattooed on them as they as they ascend and things mm-hmm. like that. I mean, that just makes taking ascendancy way more cool. Which is, it's already, I think, I I'll almost feel like ascendancy is more important than the classes for players kind of like feeling the vibe of what they want to do with their character yeah, like. for, for sure because i mean the classes are pretty open you can play whatever skills yeah. whatever weapon sure you're on a passive tree at a start point but you know by high level you kind of go wherever you want to go using jewels especially getting off class stuff you can kind of be whatever you want with the base class yeah so eventually yeah the ascendancy is what becomes more of that important identifying feature because that's what you have actually chosen that makes you distinct um, that another different class wouldn't be able to actually have. So, yeah. Yeah, so you want to make that super, super cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and on that note, uh, I know I was definitely confused. I know people were definitely confused and a little worried about Ascendancy and what's happening mm-hmm. with that. And people were, like, watching the, like, um, the second trial. Yeah, yeah. And Can you respect like, it? Oh, what if I don't yeah, like yeah. this? Oh, sure. is this another lab again? But I want you to, like, lay it out as, like, simply as possible like how how do you ascend yeah so effectively um in the full game there's going to be three ascendancy trials for early mm-hmm. access there's two and effectively you can use any of those ascendancy trials to be able to do your ascension you choose you yeah you choose. choose which one and effectively um if you uh as, as you get to higher level like higher level keys well, for those trials, one you can yeah um, i'm guessing unlock, you can uh, too. more points like if you do it at, at certain level break points uh that will allow you to get more points for those classes so if you want to just play the entire uh, just just only the uh, trial of the chaos god um, with, um, uh, you know, to get all your points, uh, then you can just decide to do that. Just play it at higher and higher levels and you get more points as you go through. Um, you know, if you want to do a mix, that's fine too. Um, personally, I think people will want to try out all the different content. I mean, you might mm. think that you... Um, but e- even even within the trials, there's there's choices, right? Like, um, I know that there's always contention around traps, yeah. but uh, <laughs> because in the... Um, uh, because, because in the uh, trial of the Sekimas, you can choose which rooms you want to go to. If you don't want to deal with traps, you just don't pick those rooms, right? Like yeah, you don't go um, into the gauntlet yeah, rooms. don't go to the gauntlet rooms. You can just go to other things. Do the combat, combat ones. Do the combat ones, and that's yeah. fine too. So I will dodge effectively, it. it's like you always get to choose like what you're doing there. Um, like It's funny because like I know traps are so contentious, but um, also there are other people who just enjoy that stuff. So, you know, we want to have something mm-hmm. for all those people too. There's these yes, like path um, of exile, divisive content, but lots of choice, and you can yeah. choose what to do and what not to do. And then we're embracing that here now, and that is. I mean, just you're clearly win. leaning into that now. You have, you have. Well, I mean, such a competitive advantage in that you have so much content, and even with Pee Wee Two, that's still going to be the case. Mm-hmm. So you can lean into that, like making content that is spicier mm-hmm. but divisive for sure mm-hmm. and now you're like separating trees and having these things be a little able to be focused on a lot mm-hmm. more um, yeah, yeah. and you're doing that with the trials with the ascendancies mm-hmm. 
So mm. yeah, and, and you can like you can kind of do all of them and drip feed yourself smaller and progression I mean, the, the, if you want. The, the, and there's also stuff that you're going to be getting from those like, portable rewards and everything yeah. that might, might incentivize you to do that. Mm. But of course, on the other hand, if you don't want to do that content, uh, we have open full open trade. Right, you can just trade for the rewards, and that's yeah. fine too. <laughs> so uh, you know, like that's water, part of the, yes, Where like the rewards there. For example, um, like jewels drop throughout the world. But if you want to get more jewels, you go and run Sanctum. Yeah. Now, if you want to get the Radius jewels, you you do, well, it's Sanctum. I can't. Play. It's <laughs> trial of it the is, Sycamore. So just, just for anyone who um, isn't a Path of Exile One player, um, this is effectively a sequel to Sanctum League that we did in Path of Exile yeah. One. Um, so it's mechanically very similar. Yeah. But um, it's obviously you know, a Marrakesh. Uh, you know, like dude, I gotta go to Dreamhack, now, man. You know, a lot of things go about a bit have changed, you know, like the content is new, but it is effectively the same yeah. overall mechanic. Yeah. Uh, you know, in terms of that, that sort of roguelike. Uh, 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 mechanic that we have. And it's the same with the other one. You have Ultimatum and POE1 yep. being the theme, and of course now it's redesigned and it's ev evolved into uh, yeah. Trial of Chaos. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. A lot of people in chat would have been spamming Ultimatum, and for those who haven't played would probably be like, what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't understand. Yeah, effectively, <laughs> effectively the Trial of the Chaos, uh, of, of Chaos is I a sequel to Ultimatum. Yep. Um, which is, um, and yeah. we just have to get used to the new names, <laughs> which is very hard. Um <laughs> But uh, yeah, anyway, the point being, like, of course, and Val Orbs drop in the world as well. And if you want a larger dose of Val Orbs and, you know, you don't want to trade, mm -hmm. go feel free to run some ultimatums. thing is, because they're all item-generated keys as well, it's not like you have to do it right What I was going to say keys away. was... Um, at any point, you can Like someone said, is the first time I've seen an ARPG do um, where you can have two-handed weapons in one hand since Baldur's Gate Dark at Alliance. At your, at your leisure, you know what I mean? And it's I felt like, so nostalgic because that's true. I've never seen another game do it except as, this as now. A lot in Path of Exile tradition, but well, as as is everything, right? Oh, we do, the yeah. only the only thing you can't trade is gold. Yeah. That's so the we're only like one. The exact opposite of most games. D3 where it's like Crusader. The gold is freely oh. tradable, <laughs> and the items get locked. Where like the gold is the only thing you can't trade, and yep. every other item is free and open. Yeah, yeah, and that's because you've made gold be this like way to be like you're playing the game, so you have access to this, and absolutely, so you yeah, don't yeah. want to trade that away. Effectively, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so. How uh, on the ascendancies and the trials? How hard do you foresee getting your ascendancy to be while leveling? Do you expect people to fail out and attempt these things multiple times? And what does that look like if you do? Well, I failed the first time I did this. <laughs> yeah, I did the trial. It is important to know that that first itemized key um, is a quest key, and we have special rules around it that if you do fail you can just repeat it, right? Yeah, you changed so, that recently because yes, uh, that was something that I didn't actually realise you'd changed. Uh, I guess it was a little bit too harsh to require to get another one. Yeah, you weren't the only one failing it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so pretty much you get to re-attempt it and, um, you know, for something like Ultimatum, you know, the, the, uh, you know, just to immediately start thinking of exploits. It's like, oh, I can just do three of the waves, then intentionally fail and then repeat them. Well, we've thought of that. Don't worry. You can't. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the first ones are repeatable. You're not going to be like, you know, oh, what the heck? Now I have to just play to the whims of random generation to ascend? Like, that. Right. yeah. So. It, is, it, it is pretty hard, though. Like, it will take, I, I mm -hmm. definitely don't think you'll do it on your first attempt. In um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla? Yeah, but that's not an ARPG, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, ARPG I was, style. I was clenched, though. Yeah, okay. Yeah, especially right. in that boss fight. I was, yeah. watching, I was watching him do yeah, the boss yeah, fight. You came by right as I was doing the boss but fight. But you had some, like, kind of powerful boons there, to be perfectly honest. So. <laughs> I got 60% move speed. But yeah, you were like, I didn't know the Apple 3 had it. I was watching you from... I'm like, how is he so fast? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the PoE2 in his life. What was Dodro was going across half the arena? That's all I wanted to say, though. Hey, you. Like a green guy in a rival, Sharks to Dream Mobile. Oh, yeah, and Corners of Freedom thinks the biddies. like, mostly like Sanctum. I don't want to do it all the time, but I did quite like the trial of Sakuma. But knowing You might need to refresh, then maybe it helps. 100%. So you've got these, you've got these, like, two roguelike dungeons that are going into the beta that launch, but they've been done very differently. One's got the honor system. Them, which is like a separate health, but it's based hey, on it's scaled you. by your health, which I yes. noted is quite And your defenses now, it can be fully defenses. mitigated and yeah, everything. So yeah, fully right. scaled by your character. You go in and a tanky hey, character, you. you'll be tanky in the dungeon, which is really cool. Two ended so, plus and shield, not two ended, two ended. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah just right, right. people will ask. In Ultimatum, there aren't any traps. Dude, chat, I gotta yes. drive yes. to DreamHack, <laughs> man. No traps in Ultimatum, and no honor system In the snowstorm, I think there's a blizzard experience, then that's your choice. And then there's gonna be a third one as well, which will eventually. Hopefully they are okay with that. Then we'll... Hey, you. I'll link the stream in case you want more drops. It's over there. Yeah, I have yeah. to, uh... My brain runs out of RAM trying to comprehend Dude, yeah. all this my... They have so much content in early access, it's insane. But the thing is, just take it one hey, step at you. a time. That's what I'm gonna do. 
One step at a time. Oh, just that with hey, the two-handed you... weapons in one hand, English. <laughs> yeah, Mika is already there. I couldn't because this, this, yeah. this. Pe Are you going to play a soy bender or a soy mancer? No, I gotta do that. The warrior looked so heavy. I loved it. There was actually impact behind the hits, which is so rare hey, for you... ARPG to get right. I think, and maybe they won't get it right either. But it looked good, though. It looked good. Another victim. Exactly, kinetic. Yeah. You you don't have to do all the content. Just do the things you like. You just hey, have a lot you. of choices, which is cool. That's a very nice way to put it. Ooh, play tester said it felt hey, good. Very you. nice. Very nice. Oh man, my brain's a bit fried from that, and I gotta drive in this fucking hey, bl you. blizzard now. Ooh. Oh man, Witch and Sorcerer for you? Hey, you. Yeah, I also love it. I'm definitely going to play with WASD movement, but also the fact that you can hold up a shield. The shield is just not, it's not a cosmetic thing. The shield is something you actually use, which is also like, I don't recall ever seeing hey, that in an ARPG. Normally it's like you have a shield and it's random block chance. And then you see a block animation. It's not something you actively have to do. Oh, now it's like you can hold it up and uh -uh, it does something. Hey, angry. So yeah, that, that looks really fun to play Warrior in this, it does. Hey, you! Oof. Anyways, that's gonna be sick, December 6th. I'm, uh, I have an event December 6th, hey, so I'll you. be on, uh, 7th, it looks like. I wonder if, I, how many, I wonder how many you can play with each other. I'm fairly certain this is gonna play, but probably on the 6th, though. Hey, you! Uh, Hopefully I will not be sick after DreamHack. Oh, I gotta install Twitter on my phone again so I can post updates. I haven't had hey, it for like you. over a month now. In PoE 1, you can be six people parties. Okay, maybe that's the same in PoE 2 then. I wanted to send this yesterday, but I was so comfy and warm watching. I was super baked and fat asleep. Anyways, thank you for playing TS2 because ah. it was the first game I ever played, but never finish it because it was on Anger. I was like 10 and it's not me first ah. language. Oh, that's awesome though, Kurodo. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, that's the whole point. When I come back from DreamHack chat, we got Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, Jet Force Gemini, Mario 64, the top three games for Nostalgia November that I want to do. After that, I really want to play Stalker, man. I really do. Um, yeah, what up, Mike? See you tomorrow, man. Uh, I, I will not be live uh, at DreamHack, but I will probably be on Trista's stream. I will definitely be on Mika's stream. So, uh, yeah. That's where you'll find me. I'll post some stuff on my uh, Instagram and, and Twitter, too. I gotta install this, this app again. The only reason I don't like it is because I have the fucking recommended tab. There's a four, there's like the people you follow tab also, which I didn't even know about, so yeah. Aleppo will be there, I'll be Aleppo stream then too. I'll see you on one of those streams, and then I'm back Monday again. Unless, of course, the prophecy comes true and I get sick, which it surely won't, right? Ah. <sighs> Anyways, I will see you uh, Monday here on this channel chat. Oh yeah, I think what's gonna happen... Me and Mika might try the stream together thing on Twitch. So it's going to show that both Mika and me are live on the same channel. I don't know. I never, we never used it, but it's a thing. So, yeah. Oh. All right. Time for me to drive into Blizzard during night. That's great. Awesome. Uh, thanks, chill, everybody. Love y'all. Stay safe out there. If you see me at Dream Act, say hi. Let's chat about Gollum or some shit. Uh, love y'all. Thanks for spending your time here. Thank you so much, chat. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, see you Monday again. Bye-bye. <sighs> Where's the button? I love you guys.